name is Dan. Hello there. How's everyone doing? It's me, your boy Charles Robin. We are back with some more of the holiday day. How's everyone's Sundays going? Hope everyone's having a good Sunday so far. Nothing too serious going on. Um, I'm excited to get back into Valhalla, honestly. Um, after last night, I don't know where the story goes from there. I mean, Jill had like a major thing happen to her. Um, she seems like she's getting better. Um, but I don't know if anything is going to resolve from her and the sister uh, of her ex-girlfriend that uh, passed away. So, some things could be could be happening. There could be some more uh, revelations. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into it. I'm excited to play again. I really like this game. I think it's actually getting me to play more visual novels now. I mean, we got Valhalla. I'm going to play Potionomics next. So, um, yeah, no, I think I'm more like a visual nova kick now so and then my friend um <clears throat> violet also talked to me about uh coffee house which is like a uh which is kind of like valhalla but it's like with coffee so instead of being a bartender you'd be a barista and i'm just like hmm it's interesting that piques my interest i also heard that there's fantasy creatures in that one as well so i'm i'm looking into that um Actually, I'll look into it right now. Fuck it. Coffee talk. Mm. Here we go. Yeah, it looks kind of like Valhalla, except for there's a couple of more things to it, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it got some uh, fancy characters in it. It looks like a pretty cool game. And there's always already an episode two? Really? Wow. So it's episodic as well. Okay. That's interesting. Well, we're going to keep that in our back pocket. You know, just in case I kind of want to go down the visual novel route. But, uh, yeah, no. Um, let's get right into it then. Go ahead and get to the PC. I should probably also stop eating sunflower seeds while I'm playing this. Hmm, day 12. Alright, so. I think I read all the stuff that happened here. Let me see. No, I didn't. After I finish these delicious sunflower seeds, I'm gonna get into the augmented eye. New new article today. <clears throat> Update. Little receiving mysterious messages. It looks like we were able to record and transcribe one of the messages sent from the compromised signals. Uh, Joe Wren, the anchor from our popular two TV newscast, served as our very own test subject for the investigation. 
Who are you? Are you really alive? You're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. Huh. That's, that's totally not weird. Absolutely not. Mm. Nanomachine rejection has taken 80 lives this year. Ah, poor Jill. <clears throat> for people who have who weren't here for yesterday's stream, um, we found out that Jill's girlfriend uh, had died from nanomachine rejection. Uh, it's it's sad to see that. And granted, she didn't know anything about it. She didn't even know she had a disease. So now she's been kicking herself ever since um, her ex girlfriend's sister told her what happened to her. She looks like she's doing better, but she still looks like she's still, you know, still sad girl hours. Uh, the Health Observatory just released their annual report on nanomachine rejection cases. The total number of reported cases has risen to 80, an increase from the 60k5 cases reported last year. Nanomachine pollution was particularly strong this year due to the recent protests, wrote the observatory. Protests caused the police force to release new varieties of nanomachines. The function is still unclear, but according to our sources, they are intended for crowd control purposes. It's unlikely we'll find a cure in the near future, and we can only hope cases like these will become rare in the following years. Mm. <clears throat> Model? <laughs> so, um, another quick tidbit. She's a huge fan. She's a huge fan of uh, Model Warrior Julian, which is funny because Julian is her real name, but she just likes being called Jill. The classic magical girl show Model Warrior Julian is coming back to public television this February after almost two decades of absence. Even though the show has been on every on-demand service for a while now, most of Glitch City's citizens need to think twice before subscribing to any non-essential service, especially the lower classes who have a limited number of internet purchases this year. The show return is certainly welcome. Today's parents will finally be able to share a piece of their childhood with the kids without risking dinner or breakfast. Mm. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. <clears throat> well, it's time to go to work. Oh. Good evening. Ah, hey, Joe. How are you feeling? I won't say good, but not that bad, I guess. That's nice to hear. Where's Gil? Did you run away again? Nah, I had him on errand duty, buying the drinks for tomorrow. That sounds weird coming from the owner of a bar. Every drink from here would come out of your own of our own funds. So if we're gonna spend money, we might as well get more variety. Besides, those kind of walks are always good for you. You're the boss. Who's coming so far? Well, there's the three of us, the dogs you invited, the your you invited Titty Hacker, Gil invited Jamie. Oh yeah, I also invited Dorothy when I called her to spend the night with you. Sounds good so far. Invite anyone else you feel like inviting, the more the merrier. I could, but I bet everyone's made plans by this point. That's true. I'll be in my office. Call me should, should anything arise. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, who was the first song? Snowfall. Where is that at? Ah, here we go. So actually I need to go to Heart of the City. Okay. Time to miss drinks and change lives. Also, give me one second. I need to close my door. Dog came back in. Why did you come back in? You know you're getting walked today. And your dad's gonna be coming in mad. Because you're not downstairs. Ah, <sighs> let's see who our first customer is, everyone. Wait here, I'll check inside. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, a BT.
Why are Yik characters here right now? You know what? They're made by the same. They're they, they were published by the same studio, so of course they're both here. I didn't expect to see Yik characters here, or Y2K, as the as the actual developer says it's called. That game sucks. Everyone in that game is cool except for the main character and then the plot in the um, uh, The resolution of the plot it's bad. It's just bad. They have every, every character is cool except for the main character that sucks That really sucks and it really hurts to see something like that. Like he's a sufferable But um, what's it Vela and I forget her name, but Vela's pretty cool. I think this is Vela. Let's see. Oh a BTC bar. Excuse me, do you know where the Athena Convention Center is? Oh, you know what? They're cosplayers. Never mind. Oh, thank God. I thought this was actual Vela and the other girl. Whoo! Oh, that was a close one. Why does that place make people get lost so easily? Uh, they should have called it the Minotaur Center. Hold on, let me scribble the directions on paper. Thanks. Go to the right when you see a building filled with hobos. This should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm. Eh, what the hell? I have a drink. What about you? Um. A Brantini, please. Right. are. Thanks. That's an interesting outfit in this cold season, miss. <laughs> well, I'm actually cosplaying, so call me Vela for the time being. And your little friend is... Essentia. That's what is... That's, that was her name. Essentia. I get it. You're cosplaying, too. Sure, let's go with that. What do you mean by that? Have you heard of a game called uh, Yik Bartender? Oh God, that cult classic game that's seen like three remastered versions made by six different companies this year. That one, we're in a cosplay group dedicated to it and we got lost on the way. I heard you talking to someone outside. Oh yeah, a friend is cosplaying as Alex. I told him to wait outside. Shouldn't he enter? He'll be fine. Uh, something amiss? There's a girl behind you. Short hair, black sailor uniform, missing an arm. Wearing jeans under a skirt. Nah, nah, don't spook the bartender. Spook? Ahem. <clears throat> uh, anything else? I'm gonna fluffy dream and be on my way. And you? I'm fine. A little still freaks me out. Yeah, I see. Uh, fluffy dream. That's aged and mixed. Here you go. Yep, this is the thing. Seriously though, you should leave your you should you leave your friend outside like that? He'll be fine. He started chatting with one of the vending machines. They were talking about R and B music. Does your friend prefer the nineteen eighties R and B or the nineteen seventies? Nineteen eighties, I think. Oh shit. Boss! Diddy, R&B, I'm coming. Um, you see, Diddy is a 1970s purist. He has tased people for even liking 1980s R&B before. <laughs> he got tased. <sighs> oh God, he'll be fine. Vending machines have a very weak tasers. He'll be confused for a couple of minutes, but that will be it. Uh, you should go check on him though. Right, thanks again for the directions. Please come again. Uh, at least it wasn't Franco Belgian comic opinions this time. What the hell is a Franco Belgian comic? Black Sailor uniform. I hope I'm just overthinking it. More importantly, though, jeans under a skirt. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hey, Dorothy. Oh. You. Hi, hi. Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I 
guess I'm a bit distracted. Okay, let me just wander. Can I get you something? Oh, uh, sugar rush. Yeah, that. Right. Um, shit. might look this up because I do not remember and then don't 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 look at me like that uh, because th th this is how I usually play games especially when something like this especially when I'm trying to like you know make sure I get all the story content Didn't you say you liked having a piano woman whenever you felt like celebrating and you were feeling down? I did. Wait, I did. You actually remember such a thing. I'm glad I looked that up because I was just going to get her a sugar rush. <laughs> Listen, I, I actually really like Dorothy like a lot and I want to make sure that I get everything right when it comes to her. You're so sweet. I was half expecting her to say that she meant a literal piano and I'm glad I was wrong. So much silence. By the way, thanks for staying with me the other day. It turns out I really needed that. Wait, I saw hearts. Yeah, she has hearts in her eyes now. Aw, that's so cute. So did you enjoy the soda? Oh, did you find that one out? Was it supposed to be a secret? No, that don't go around telling everyone about it. I did it because it was you who needed my help. But a hug night sure is, but a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. It is? Hey, I don't know if the client has body order or something like that. Not to mention it limits the chance of getting any other client that night. Still, did it help? Yeah, it helped me cool down a lot. So from what Dana told me, someone close to you died, right? Yeah. You wanna know more about it? You wanna tell me about it? I've bought it up enough times already, I think. No problem, then. You were sad, and that's all I needed to know. Sorry for the loss, though. I mean it. Thanks. Although I've wondered for a while, do women really understand death? Sorta. Kinda. Our whole database is constantly being backed up in a collective source. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we can be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. So, our concept of mortality might be different. They do have a fear of death, though. You do? We can't even begin to understand the ideas of not being redeployed. While we have built-in warnings, the mere idea of that nothingness is paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but we do fear death, and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, that was the argument used for abolishing the whole three laws thing. It seemed quite knowledgeable about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure I can live like I do helps me not take things for granted. Oof. Oof. Message. Seriously though, those laws were closer. Can't harm humans, can't disobey humans unless it's about hurting them. And you can't protect yourself. Um, uh, you can protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. I mean, sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools. 
But how could those laws still apply to them after they achieve self-awareness? When their right minds would abide only by rules inscribed in some old book. If I remember correctly, those were only the distilled versions of the laws some writer imagined over 100 years ago. They were a reduced version of all his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took them like they were very laws of physics or something. And like many other things, people distilled and exaggerate what they need and what they need and use it to their favor. Wow, you're a nerd. Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, though. Mood's getting gloomy. Your apartment is very comfy, you know. It's a tad small, though. Sorry about that. And your cat is so cute. What was his name again? Four. Why four? I figured if he ever got lost, at least I want to be able to yell four. <laughs> That's good. That's good. It happened once. You'd be surprised at how many golf players you run into. And every time you play with him, you can say it's foreplay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was also named after someone. Really? Who? A little kid that wanted to transcend. What? A movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. Do you want anything else? Uh, let's see if you know me that well. Give me something I'd like. Okay, then. Fuck! Oh! Oh! Um... Should we get curly drinks? I think she would get a blue fairy, actually. I'm gonna get this one wrong, and I hate it. <laughs> All aged and mixed. Alright, cool. What about this? Yup, just nice. Oh, thank you. You order, you always order either sweet or girly drinks. It was a no-brainer. Girly and sweet drinks for a sweet girl. I still can't believe you actually remembered that I said about the piano woman. It's always good to keep note of what regulars like, you know. I've wondered for a while, though. Why do you keep coming back here? For you, of course. Come again? Why else would I come if not to see you? You're one of the few people willing to hear me out, always filled with curiosity. And you're cute. Talking to cute people is always nice. See, that's what I'm saying! There's also the bar, the way it's insulated from the noise of the city. It's really comfortable. And it's just a bit away from the street I'm always at. A win-win situation. I see. It was weird to see you down though, especially since you're always so lively. Well, I wasn't down really, I was just thinking about a lot of things. Like what? Well, my mom, er... Guardian asked me to go home on Monday for a bit. And as much as I love her, being with her is usually tiring. Guardian. That whole thing about someone taking care of Lilum after they're deployed until they reach maturity, right? Yep, I'm proud to say that I reached psychological maturity in just one year. They always try and keep a varied pool of volunteers to make the collective source go faster. So what's wrong with your Guardian? Well, she still treats me like a kid. The worst part is that sometimes I fear she might see me as some sort of replacement for her dead daughter. Oh! Huh? Dead daughter? I was deployed to her not long after she lost her daughter. A contrived coincidence, really. Even when I was still developing self-awareness, I always feared she might be using me as a replacement. She didn't, though, or at least not consciously. At times, she would just stop doing something or return the gift she'd given me. And she felt like she was projecting too much of her daughter onto me. What irony that years later I'd make a living pretending to be someone else in the bedroom. How's that? Well, most of the time my job involves road playing. A daughter, a student, some helpless kid. It means I've gotten many clients looking exactly for that, but on the other hand, from a professional standpoint, I'd rather have them hire me because of me. Because of my character, not because I'm the one that Rose plays as little girls. Maybe I need to exaggerate some attributes. Uh, what's the problem with your guardian there? If you do that on a daily basis, why worry about it? Because I don't want to make her sad. Every time I visit her, I feel she might look at me and see her daughter. That seeing me makes her sad. At this point, I don't even care if she's projecting her daughter onto me. I just don't want her... I just don't want to make her feel sad. Did you try talking with her? How so? Telling her just what you said to me. Clear up those fears. 
I mean, unless she's not the kind to want anyone opening up to her, that is. I never really thought about talking to her about that. It doesn't sound like something you just bring up, though. Keep it in mind, at least. Maybe she'll appreciate the gesture. I wouldn't know, though. I haven't met her. She's a really nice woman. The problem is, it's... The problem is mostly with me, I think. Well, then I'm taking my break. Oh, I'll be leaving then. No, what I was trying to say is that I'm taking my break. You want to come? Really? If you don't mind talking uh, on a chilly night in an alley behind the bar, that is. Eh, I've done worse in alleys. <laughs> Let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. All right. That was a pretty quick break, actually. I think we might get to the Christmas party quite fast, actually. Oh! This is new. I uh, want one. Are you really offering me a little girl, uh, offering a little girl a cigarette? Now you're a little girl. I always am innocent, however. Is another matter entirely. Anyways, thanks. No, smoking seriously messes with my air filters, and they're a hassle to replace. Don't mind me, though. Smoke to your heart's content. Thanks. So why don't you tell me about this guardian for us? I want to know what kind of woman she is. Sure. Well, her name is Sophia Graham. Graham. She's a retired PE teacher nowadays. She works at the gym during the morning shift. She's a pretty fit, if I do say so myself. She had a daughter, apparently. She suffered from nano machine rejection all of her life. And when she finally healed, she was hit by a truck. Jesus Christ! What the fuck? Um, what was her daughter's name? I don't know. I never asked, really. Are you okay? I'm reading fear. Or is that a surprise? It's hard to tell. I'm fine yet. Yeah. Wait, read? Well, I don't see emotions like you do. I have to make do with a combination of body heart re body heat readings, face recognition, and contacts. I'm still a bit confused about some, but I've gotten better with time. Anyway, you sure you're fine? Y yeah, yeah. It's gonna surprise. She's not wrong though. Wait, does that mean your last name is really Hayes? Hayes is just my artistic name. Sounds more exotic, and that's what people usually look for in this business. I tried other names though. Dolores Hayes, Genesis Graham. I tried Dorothy Warrior once, but a legal team came out of nowhere and stopped me cold. So what's your legal name then? Rebecca Dorothy Willow Graham. Bit of a mouthful if you ask me. So Dorothy's actually your second name? Should I call you something like Becky then? People have always called me Dorothy rather than Rebecca for some reason. That's why I chose it. It's useful too. People have tried to falsify stuff using my name and they always get caught. Because they use Dorothy Hayes as their name. Yep. Only my mom, or er, guardian, calls me Rebecca, so it's weird to hear it from others. What about Willow? Willow's my first surname, actually. When I got registered, my guardian was married to a guy who had Willow as a last name. Shortly after I joined their household, they separated, so I was left with, this, with his family's first name. Hold on, so your real name in short would be Rebecca Willow. Doesn't have the same pizzazz to it, if you'd ask me. Whatever you say, Becky. Stop it! It'd be like if I call you Julian all of a sudden. Ugh. Ahem. Whoa, that was the anger I just read now. Lots of anger. <laughs> I think it's weird enough already if you call me Jill instead of Honey. Weird, huh? How can you end up feeling associated with a name that's not yours? I have an uncle that always called me Tina. He kept calling my cousin Tina Jill for some reason. Neither of us mind it, though, because he's calling us what he thinks we're called instead of mixing us up. That and it's completely useless to try to correct them. But you know, maybe that effect is true for your clients, too. How so? Well, you're worried about your clients not hiring you because you're you, right? But think about what happens when it's announced that a character will be played by a different actor. Sure, it's a character, but people are also going for the actor playing the character. So you're saying to go for my roleplay and just mere roleplay? Sounds too far-fetched. Sounds plausible, actually. Okay, honey, I'll take my leave now. Don't want to take up all of your break. Thanks for the chat. See you at the party tomorrow. Bye. And remember to buy more cigar cigars. 
Oh, those are just cigars? I thought they were just cigarettes. Let's just go with this again. Back, did I miss something? Unless you count the worst PvP main event fight I've ever seen all year. Not really, no. Alright. Going out? I'll have a word with Gogo -Go outside. He was hyped for that match. He must be devastated. Okay. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Sai. Good evening, Joe. How are you doing? The nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. Holy shit. Um, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally closed. The scars itch a bit, though. No, oh, that's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm running a couple of errands by myself today, but I wanted to come here for a while. I also noticed the big guy for the last time is outside. Buster? Stella doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she suggested taking him with me. Ah, I see. What can I get you? Uh, something cold. Sure. Something cold. Shot moon blast. I think you'll like this one. Really? That's <laughs> so sweet of you. Thanks. So, Stella isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow, is having a meeting today. I'm just helping her by checking on some of the things she ordered. Here I was, all ready to invite you to the party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that. Can't really say no to Stella. Maybe next time? If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. I want you to know that I want you to, to have a good time. Have fun, drink a couple of beers in our honor. Eh, I will then. What are some Christmas parties like? They're really big. There's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food, though. So at the end of the party, she lets the staff take home whatever's left. She also buys toys for all the children on her of her staff members. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have even started calling her Auntie Ella. Oh. Oh, that's so cute. Oh. Heh. <laughs> Stella always does her best to put up a tough girl for Saw, but she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name a party, and she most likely celebrates it big. Interesting. Do you like parties, Joe? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend, though. I'm just... don't mind going to them. Ah, I see. I only go to parties that Sella is attending, because otherwise I just stand there without saying anything, without anything to say. That and I'm not one to wear dresses, you know. You're not? I'm a tattoo ripped. They don't look cute on me. <laughs> Whatever. Although with all this healing I have to do, I won't be as fit for a while. They're too um, breezy too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. But I bet you look good in the dress, Joe. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. Last time I wore one, I remember worrying my arms were too thin or something like that. You all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's hard to imagine. Oh, but she does have one. She distresses a lot about her bust size. Really? She's not that small. I think I'm smaller than her, in fact. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? Again, I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Although I guess comparisons are useless here. They really help with complexes. Well, she does go to the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean, I've only seen her before and after she tucks them away, but I guess I never cared enough to ask the, the specifics. That's always why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those, um, drills? They look a bit drilly, don't they? She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her chest. 
She seems affluent enough, why not go through a rejection surgery? It's because she also kind of likes having the size. She tests her bust size after her mom, and Miss Carmine is quite proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence, and a bigger chest means a more confidence to show. She says something along those lines a lot. Someone has quite the admiration of her for her mom, so I guess breast reduction would feel like betraying her. Huh. Making it sound like she's hiding J cups or something like that. I guess in a taller or thicker person, her size would be normal. She's just a bit shorter and thinner than the norm. Do you get self-conscious about your bus size, Joe? Not really. I've been more self-conscious about my height. Although it usually comes up whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. What about you? Yes and no? It's not my bus size, but rather, I look too manly sometimes. No, you don't. Girl, you look... Mm. I can't help but wonder if bigger booze would help with that. You're fine, don't worry. Thank you. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. You have something non-alcoholic? I do. Give me a sec. Um, let me see. This two, three, one, two, three. Apes and mix. Here, thanks. You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are you? It makes me feel sleepy, or that very least makes me my legs go numb. It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You feel like you're sleepy even when you're not. Your legs go numb, everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good about not being able to control yourself? That's a good question, actually. Go! Go, Cookie! Go! Go! Uh, usually people like feeling numb because that numbness helps them forget their problems. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that can't afford food. Or who are suffering from pain or that only alleviates when drunk or high. It doesn't sound really logical on paper, but then again, humans are rarely, if ever, logical creatures. Give me one second, everyone. I'll be right back.
All right. Why was the days I'm streaming that? Oh, my hat. That people want something. All right, despair and pain cloud your judgment and make you do stupid things sometimes. Yeah, I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side nobody deserves to be a part of. <laughs> it's also a matter of addiction, you know. You start just like the drink, but then you need more of it and before you know it, you're hooked. Oh yeah, that too. So tell me, what kind of party are you guys throwing? Nothing fancy, it'll just be me, ball skill, and a couple of regulars. They'll bring food, we'll chat for a while, and then that's it. Man, that sounds so good. At least better than the whole planning madness Stella's doing right now. If I ever throw something like that again, you let me know, you hear? Sure. Hey, say. Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm gonna check out one last errand before going home. No, I mean, what do you plan on doing now with the white knights to spend it in all? To be honest, I don't know. I never prepared a plan B because I figured if you can go with a plan B, why not make it with a plan A? I'm not the brightest person, so I never graduated from college or even high school. I could go for a position with the police, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. And I'm tired of blatant p p corruption, sick of it. Oh. But I'm alive. Hmm? I learned something after that hell in Apollo Trust. Life is not something you can just throw away easily. Climb my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. The body count left in the bank was ridiculous, but I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm alive. I'll figure out sooner or later. I'll figure it out sooner or later. That's nice to know. Well, I gotta go. Bye, Jill. Good luck with the party. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, I'm Mr. Detective. Ah, hey there, girl. Give me a strong drink, won't you? All right. Something strong for Mr. Detective. Give me something manly. There we go. Gut punch. I did that wrong. Aged and then mix. Here we go. Yes, this will do. So, what brought you here? Nothing special. I was just working on a case that I happened to be in the area. What kind of work? Tracking someone. A uh, gun for hire. What about the girl, Crimson or something? I'm tracking that girl. Can you just get out of that job? I did, but the guy offered a huge amount of money and, well, I just couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wondered though, there has to be uh, more to that whole thing than just acting as a middleman to look for some murderer. Hmm. Say, how safe is this place? We are protected by the BPTC property laws, the walls are soundproof, and I really couldn't give less of a shit about selling info there. Anymore. Okay then. Wait, soundproof walls? Why? Did you see those vending machines outside? They're quite talkative, the bastards. It'd be annoying without those walls. Alright then. Have you ever heard of Lord Lance Lavender? Nope. He's a... He's some big name from... Kanye Vania? His blood apparently has some weird reaction to Glitch City's animal shapes. Once in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if it's still fresh and touching someone's blood, then animal machines will initiate a reaction. Essentially, they'll just eat through the other person's body until they're stuck in love. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes the reaction if it could be used to fight an animal machine rejection. Uh-huh. Well, turns out the Crimson Rose is his daughter. She left years ago to earn her living here, and she and he hasn't seen her ever since. He could be lying, you know. Doubt it. I did my research. She really is his daughter. Why didn't she figure that out earlier? I had no clue who was making the contract, and then tracking all the messages, the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Hmm, what about a cobalt velvet? Okay. Here you 
you got her? Oh, you actually did it. Were you expecting me to mess up so you didn't have to pay? N no. So what made you accept the contract anyways, keeping in mind all the risk you just told me last time? He told me he wanted to see her again one last time, or at the very least deliver her a message. He could have been lying. Yes, people lie. You made your point. Even then, I felt like I couldn't say no. I mean, I know what it's like not being able to find your daughter. What it's like to be apart from her, not knowing what she's doing or even if she's alright. You do? I have a daughter. She's about your age. When she was a teen, she had a, we had a big fight and she ran away from home. At first, I just waited for her to show up, but then I started getting worried and went out to find her. I couldn't find any trace of her. Nobody had seen her. Soon, I was worried if something might have happened to her. I guess that's how my tracking skills and list of contests began to grow. I finally find her taking cover in some dumpster unconscious from starvation. So yeah, I just couldn't say no to his request of finding his daughter. But I don't expect you to understand. So how's the search going? I'm very close to finding her. That girl's pretty good at covering her tracks. Compared to her from before the bank incident, though, she seems slower somehow. Either she let her guard down or something else is happening. What will you do when you find her? I have this letter I'm supposed to deliver to her. I don't know what it says and I don't want to find out. What if she tries to kill you? It might not look like it, but I can take care of myself, bartender. You don't stay too uh you don't stay so long in this business without picking up a couple of tricks. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, better go back to work before her trail goes cold. Please come again. Are you done? Yeah. Okay then, I want you here tomorrow at 8 p.m. No working beforehand. The bar will be closed tomorrow. Come dress your absolute best. We're having a party after all. Alright. Where's Gil, by the way? He stored all of our things in his home because of how close it was to the stores. So I told him to go home already and bring this up tomorrow. I see. Well, see you tomorrow, boss. Hold on, wait a minute, and I'll go with you. Oh, sure, thanks. Money. Also, flawless service bonus. Oh, bellissimo. Oh. Merry Mega Christmas! Let us celebrate Santa's resurrection as the Mega Santa that saved Christmas from the Red Mons. Happy Holidays! Be right back. I have to go make piss.
All right, I'm back. Oh, God. Ugh. Need that. A new thing from Mir Ki uh, Kirimiki's blog. Mecha Christmas is here. I'm way too used to Christmas, but Mecha tradition here in Glitch City is mega comfy. I know it's an incredibly absurd name, and the holiday isn't any less crazy due to its orig origin, but I find it amazing how GC managed to replace the original festivities. Some places celebrate Christmas eating fried chicken, but here they outright change the holiday. Well, it's not that different considering they still have the same dates, but it's still pretty cool. Whoop, I gotta go. Time to sign some books. Update 2, Lilum receiving, Lilum receiving mysterious messages. Messages have suddenly stopped and everything is normal, still is normal again. Still, we can't stop wondering what the deal. Was it a prankster or someone who just discovered how to subvert public communication channels in Lilum? Either way, some reports indicate the Lilum behavior have been rather unusual of late. Although we can only imagine the confusion they were going to. Not the first time. Let's not forget something similar happened five years ago where Lilum Advancements was at its historic high. Fortunately, nothing came out of it. Will it happen again? Time will tell. Is it sexist to have an army of robot women? The ones without artificial intelligence, mind you. The King of the West, Kanje, from the Western na uh, nation of Kanyevania, has approximately 6,000 robot soldiers all of whom look like the hottest girls around. But is this show of crankiness from the wacky dictator problematic? Those dictators from Venezuela or whatever just do whatever they want. They don't give a shit. Marina Zimmer, 35, told the Augmented Eye during a street interview. They're all pretty hot though. If I was him, I would had done the same. Why bother with the real thing when you just make them from scratch to make every, uh, to match your every needs? Once we investigate. Interesting. Yo. Yo Ro, Yo Ri is the best show this season. If you weren't a fan of Yuri. Jill, you are a nerd. What are you talking about? If you weren't a fan of Yuri or Slife Life shows already, then be prepared to join the Moe Church this season with the premiere of Yoru Yori, one of the funniest shows I've seen in recent years. The pals at the popular Danger U forum, however, seem to be divided. This is just obvious pandering. Or when anime was about women doing lovely things and beating the shit out of each other? What is this trash? You girls are just haters who hate their lives. I'm going to marry Sheena Sue. Wake me up inside. You can catch V uh, YY every Friday on RSTV. That was a weird one. That was a really weird uh, fucking tidbit. Day 13. Oh, let's give it up for day 13. Day 13. Let's give it up for day 13. All right, let's go to work. Oh wait, we're not working today. Meaning, Jill, I told you to come in in the nicest clothes you have. You came in your uniform. These are the nicest clothes I have with me. Besides, you and Gil are in your uniforms too. Well, I can't really show up in usual casual clothing being mon monitored. What about the kilt you wore that one time? I'm still surprised that one didn't break the dress code somehow. And you, Gil? I don't have that many clothes to begin with. You people depress me. Well, everything's in place back here. Ah, almost here. You know, there was a time when people greeted others before saying stuff like that. I'm on Jill, greet her properly. Welcome to Vaha- Wait. <laughs> Man, if that's not a sign you need to ease up from the work, I don't know what it is. Shut up, it's become a reflex. Wait, Alma also came in her usual attire. Why aren't you saying anything to her? Rib sweaters got a free get a free pass. Why? Silly question, never mind. Jamie came early too. The dogs went with him to get some ice. Do we have ice? I'm trying to take it out of the bartending station is a chore, so it's better to buy some outside. Huh. What were you doing about there, Alma? Sending up the food warmer. The what? I bought it three days ago. It's amazing. It looks like a. It looks just like a set of wires, but you can create a frame with them. Put the food inside, press a button, and watch as it warms the food up, just like a microwave. It's an information bobble, though. Really useful, but tricky to handle at the same time. One wrong move, and we'll be out of food for the night. Everything will be scorched in a second. Oh. 
so you've bought infomercial stuff too, haven't you? It's at the very least a good idea for gifts. Well, dynamic entry. Finally, at least someone came after me. Is it weird that I already heard that three times in the last hour? <sighs> oh, don't be like that. She's not saying out of mouths or anything. She just found it funny. You're taking her side now? Jealous? You wish. You don't need to fight for me. We're not. I'll go check the microwave wire things. Uh, I'm starting to get hungry. Great idea. Back. Oh. Ah, hello, Joe. Soldier, you're late. Hey, Jay. See, that's how you greet people. You shut it. I'll go help. I'll, um, uh, I'll go help sweater pups. Something wrong? She's not good with dogs. Oh. All right, we're all here, so we can start. Yo, Anchorage. Alma. I know what I said. How's the food doing? It's doing well, but it'll take a bit. Can you speed it up? I've used those microwave wire things before. It's either warm nicely, but slowly, or burn that bitch. So how long? 15 minutes or so. A bell will ring when the time comes. We need to kill some time then. Hmm. All right, let's play true for dare. Oh no. What? I'll pass. Games are for kids. I'm in. Sure, I'll play. Sounds fun. As long as the must stays away from me. <laughs> I'll make the time pass faster. I'll pat. You'll play. Fuck. What the hell is this? Hold on, I have to move my camera. Hold on. Let me let me, let me do do that real quick. Move this down here, I believe. There we go. All right then, rules are simple. If you get picked, you either pick true for dare. If you finish, you get to pick someone else. We go like that until the food's done. Uh, what about punishment games? Those are a hassle. Just issue new questions or challenges until the other person completes. complies. That said, Jill. Yes. You start to pick someone. Oh, um, let's see. Definitely want to do Dorothy first. <laughs> well, then Dorothy. Yes. Uh, truth or dare? Let's go with truth. Is there anything you have rejected from clients? Those who want to role play with mutilation. Huh? I mean, sure, I can take off my limbs with no problems. I have to do that for maintenance every now and again. But I'm not okay with doing it for clients because, first, that leaves me defensive, which I cannot allow by any means. And second, half the time, the roleplay involves a violent scenario. And there are some behaviors I won't reinforce, namely non-consensual violence of any kind. Interesting. All right, then, my turn. You, sweater pups. Me? Truth or dare? Um, dare. Man, you're brave. You're stupid. <laughs> okay, I want you to say in the most slutry voice you can muster, admin override. Okay. <clears throat> Admin override. Happy? Yes, very. <laughs> See if you cause some collateral damage here. <laughs> hmm? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> My man's Gil Gillian. <laughs> don't mind me. Seriously, guys. Well, let's see. Uh, you, the dog. My name is... Yeah, whatever. I want to see you bark. I want you to bark. I didn't pick there. I said bark. Bark! I asked you to do it, not to say it. Bark. Barking. Hey, if I bark, then I'm the king of the bar. That means I'm barking. <laughs> Seriously, Joe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have some lame sense of humor, whatever. <laughs> Alright, my turn. Hey, Jay, true for dare. Um, dare. Then pet me. I'll pick true. Okay, why are your nails so thin? My eh? Your nails. You won't be able to dig with such flimsy nails. Um, all humans have nails like those? Wait, they do? How do you 
dig with shovels. You guys are weird. Why are you so reluctant to pet it? Call it a gut feeling. I wonder how long until the food's done. Ah, uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's pick boss. All right, boss, pick. Uh, truth me. How did you get your arm? <laughs> yes, let's go. On second thought, dare me. <laughs> Let's go by the neck of his shirt. <laughs> okay. Eh. Wah! Happy. I guess. Who cares? I didn't even hear about your arm. I do. I care. <laughs> All right, Gil. Now that I have you in this position, answer me. I didn't pick. You're in no position to pick. Now answer. Did you live in Scotland for two years? Scotland? No. I guess that rules out a couple of possibilities. Um, Chief? What? Oh, right, I'm still lifting you. Sorry. And now she apologizes. Guess it's my turn. Hey, Alma, truth or dare? Hmm, dare. Ooh, ooh, I have a suggestion. You stay quiet. <laughs> Fine. Hmm. How strong are those arms of yours? Still my muscle under them, so not very. Although not having fleshy skin makes things easier. Wait, that's truth, not dare. I just wanted to make sure. I dare you to break this nut with your hands. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that was easy. Holy shit, girl, are you really into that? Eh? Asking a woman to break a nut in her hands and watching her eat it, does that turn you on? Eh? Wait, wait, wait. Is this an actual thing that turns guys on? I need to know for professional reasons. <sighs> You're a pervert, girl. Get. Yeah. Wait. That was close this time. My turn? Alright. Hey, Joe, pick. Um, truth. Okay, then. What's your most embarrassing childhood dream? Oh, I know this one. Um, elaborate. For example, when I was a girl, I wanted to be a professional puzzle master. I guess in a way I accomplished that, but you need under but you understand. I wanted to be a ventriloquist. Wait, what? Huh? When I was a child, I liked this show called Lucia's Funhouse. The one with the woman in the house with the talking stuff? That one. My parents divorced when I was around six, I think. Mom was on tour with an orchestra and my dad was working constantly. I spent a lot of time with my grandpa, but he slept a lot, so I was on my own most of the time. I like to pretend things like chairs or beds could talk, and since AI wasn't so advanced back then. Anyways, I went to a magic show once and there was this guy making a puppet talk. My dad told me he was a ventriloquist, so I kind of obsessed about wanting to be one. Even today, I'd be lying if I said that I don't think about it every now and then. So that's why you pretend Fork can talk. She what? Nothing. Oh, so it's not Four actually talking. It's Jill speaking for Four. That's cute. I'm getting hungry. Uh, I picked boss, I picked her, I'm picking Gil, actually. Well then, Gil, what do you pick? I'll go with Dare. I dare you to eat this bell pepper. Truth, I meant truth. Eat the bell pepper. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Eat it. I'd rather not. Eat it or I'll make your life impossible next week. Eat it or I'll make your life impossible next week. <laughs> Ugh. Was that hard? Yes. Uh, anyways, what do you pick, Alma? I pick Truth. What's the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you while drunk? I almost bought a timeshare in Panama. Eh? What? Ha! I was on vacation with my family and my family's friends. We went to a hotel where a couple of salesmen tried to cross us into buying a timeshare. When I was sober, it was obvious bullshit. But then I fell into their trap with the free bar. Were it not for my brother-in-law, I'd be forever doomed to spend one week a year in Panama. You could just not go. And lose my money? Forget it. A bell? Food's ready! Finally! Let's go! You guys go ahead. I have a quick smoke outside. Careful. Truth or dare, huh? It was fun, I guess. Hey! Uh, I'll... I meant hello. A bit late for the hello, don't you think? What, what? You know I don't smoke. True. Are you leaving already? Yeah, technically we celebrated Merry Christmas yesterday. But I just got a message saying Diana is making a ruckus, so I gotta leave. 
Good luck with that. Speaking of ruckus, how have you been doing? Fine, I guess. All this has kept my mind off of things for a while. <sighs> Is it weird to feel the absence of someone you had no contact with whatsoever for the last three years? Ask Kayusa or any of the old literature maidens whose spouse went to war types. I mean, even if you had no contact with her, maybe she was constantly on your mind. If you tweak the circumstances, it's not that different from one of you going to war. I guess. Well, although the circumstances uh, make me not want to, I've got to go. Careful out there. Oh yeah, you should take the chances from this time with everyone inside, don't you think? Yeah, she's right. Hey, Jill's back. you that transition was weird right it's doing the 30th please make sure your account your account has a necessary ten thousand dollars or you'll be evicted she wants to see if the alex doll's been alex doll's beard actually grows buying it will prevent her from being too distracted oh i have to buy the fucking alex doll fuck uh selling three fifty. that's fine she will bought what she wanted and She's pleased with herself. She'll show her focus at work. Gross yik man. It's yikman. Alex Yikman. He sucks. Ugh. Day after Christmas. Let's see how everything is. Bliss City Olympics returns next year. Oh, for the 10th consecutive year, the GC Olympics return to the em emblemic silver, Super Silver Thunderdome, this time with a representative from a, the elusive country of Kanye Vania. Prime Minister Quincy, who was in charge of the committee, told the augmented eye that it wasn't easy getting in touch with Kanye, and we had to abide by some of his religious rules in order to see some of his some of their best competitors game come to the country. Kanye Vania's main religion, Kanyeism, prohibits the existence of nanomachines inside the body. As such, competitors from said country said to perform had to perform specific treatments in order to repel the swarm. It's a temporary solution, but it'll do the trick. You wouldn't believe what happens in this cartoon. Cartoons are not for children. They're still largely colorful, but themes they touch have been rather dark. In fact, every cartoon on air today has dark themes. It's come to the point where innocent animated characters are no longer a thing. I suppose children are young adults from birth now. But enter Touchy Fluffy Tale, a new show that aims to challenge the current trend. No deep lore, no obscure adult references, no stupid deep plots, just fun with numbers of fluffy tales, said a TFT producer who asked to remain anonymous to avoid internet backlash. I don't want death threats for making a cartoon for actual kids. Huh. Street race at Motor City dist uh, District leaves two dead. Hmm. The Motor City District is notorious for the number of illegal street races it sees each week, and dozens of injured drivers it leaves every year. This time it has been reported that two people died during a race hosted at the Gate Highway, otherwise known as the Death Lane. The Transit Police is currently investigating the deaths as well as the underground world of illegal street racing. We have several suspects in regards to who is running this underworld, but nothing concrete as yet. Chief of the Transit Police Compartment, J. Esposito, J. Esposito told the Augmented to Eye, The death of these two youngsters will be the last, however. That's a promise. Hmm. Let's 
Let's see what this was about. Alright, yeah, no. I don't even understand why I even try to look at that sometimes. Let's go ahead and save. Now let's go to work. I gotta change, I gotta move my chamber again. Good evening. Hey, Joe. Gil's in the back sorting all ingredient shipments and I've got things to do. Dog's in charge, okay, bye. What? Wait, the dog what? Okay, first order, pet me. No. Pet me. No. I'm in charge and I want you to pet me. I wonder if she pet him. <laughs> Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, Jay. Won't pet you. You'll pet me sooner or later. They all do. Won't. Will. You called? You said Will, not Gil. Ah. Who the hell is Will? Nobody. Don't be rude with poor Will. There's no Will. Do you need me to psych you up then? Shut up. Who, me or Will? <laughs> you go back to whatever you were doing. All right. And you, stand by. Only if you pet me. Go. The fuck just happened? I just had a nice party. I just had a nice time. Why are you here? Well, aren't we spirited today? Welcome to Valhalla. For real, boy? Why you sound so weirded out? You didn't show up with a bombastic soliloquy. Well, putting up an act can be tiring, you know. So it's all an act then? Wasn't it obvious? I guess. Would you mind giving me a bleeding Jane? Sure. London. A bleeding Jane. Yes, this is just a thing. So tired of putting on an act. Care to explain? It's a long story, and I'd rather not talk about it right now. Fair enough. What made you change your mind, though? Well, for one thing, safer for me now. The pompous buffoon act was mostly a way to avoid raising suspicion. Safer? That's a word that's been losing meaning lately. Wait, that was your way of avoiding suspicion? Yes. You do know how weird that sounds, right? It sounds weird. You try not to raise suspicion, but you act in a bombastic manner. That screams you're there, and everyone dismisses the dismisses the fool as a buffoon and moves on. Yeah? I mean, you might be right if I were talking about hiding myself, but if I'm avoiding certain crowds of people, yes, my behavior might call everyone's attention. But then everyone just decides I'm harmless and disregards me. And depending on how erratic my actions are, I become harder to read, giving my giving me yet another layer of enigma. I, huh? Well, congrats, no offense, but I fell right into your plan. I just dismissed your actions as those of a fool and moved on. You completely fooled me. Thanks. I say, can you give me something spicy? Sure. Uh, I saw one of those. Hold on, wait a second. Spicy. Oh, well, I already gave him a bleeding chain. Let me see if I can find something else. Um... Let me see if there's something else that's spicy. Mars Blast, let's try this one. Yeah. 
Here. Aren't you fascinated by spice souls? What's so spicy for human might not be spicy for other animals. Hell, what's toxic for us might not be for other creatures. You like spicy things, but I don't mind them, I guess. But I'm not really a fan. That neutral stance is actually weird to go across. Everyone either loves spicy things or hates them with passion. You like it? Lux. Not only in regards to pain for these spicy things, but also the way mild or slight spice adds to a meal. I've always had this dream of opening a curry stand. As things are, I might actually pursue that dream. Let me know if you do. I haven't had curry in ages now. Hey, bartender. Call me Jill. I wanted to apologize. Hmm? You put up with me all this time without lashing out. I should apologize for my behavior and thank you at that. Oh, huh? Wait, hold on. Whoa, 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 Nah, this can't be real. No, nah, this can't. Nah, that can't be real. No, that can't. No, nah, that 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 can't be real. That. Hmm. No, that can't be real. No, that can't. That, that cannot. That cannot be real. Cannot be real. This gotta be. No, 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 no. No, this is real. This is real. I just got retweeted by the developer of this game. I need to call someone. I need to. I, 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 uh, 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 give me a second. I'm, I'm freaking out right now. Um, um, uh, uh, I need to tell someone this. Uh, 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 uh. Hold on. Okay, let's 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 go back to the game. Let's 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 get back to the game. Um, um, hmm, hmm. Um, that's cool. That's that's kind of cool. That's that's kind of real cool. Oh, okay, o okay. I need to take a screenshot of this. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this, but. Oh, fucking holy shit. That's cool. That's real cool. <laughs> fucking Sukiban Games was just like, hey, this motherfucker's playing playing Valhalla. Clink, 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 clink. Well, that's sick. Wait, someone left a comment. Oh, this drink for me is a get <laughs> I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Wait, how the fuck does already have nine likes? Wait, what? What are you talking about? What's happening? What the fuck? I'm baffled right now. I'm I'm baffled. Um, you put up with me all the time without lashing out. I should apologize for my behavior. Thank you about that. Uh, don't worry. I actually felt like I was too rude to you last time you came. Granted, you came at a recently bad time, but I should be the one apologizing. You're a client after all. Well, don't. I'm actually surprised that no one else had finally lashed out of me yet. You're making me curious as to who you really are, though. Is Borrello really even your real name? It might be. It might not. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a magnet for people who hide their identities and sword past. 
Gil, Jamie, you. Um, did you say something? Just rambling. Pay me no mind. Uh, now that I think about it, how did you find this bar? I was avoiding some chaps and came to this alley. Huh, again. Again? In my time here, I've heard avoided people and ended up here enough times to make me believe that the original owner built the bar here thinking about the runaway public. You make me sound like a criminal. You're not helping. Uh, the expression runaway doesn't just mean people escaping the law, though. We've had people avoiding stalkers or solicitors. I've seen people more shocked by an insistent salesman than a shaggy figure. Maybe because the salesman is more active predator? I don't know. A troublesome part of the city right near the shopping district. Let me know, uh, let them know there's a bar and they'll come. Sorry, I should stop rambling to myself so much. I don't mind it. Do you think I'm sort of criminal though? Like I said, you're not helping. But for all I know, you might be the buffoon I've seen the other days. In any case, can I get something bitter here? On it. Something bitter. Ah, sunshine cloud. Ah, that's too, that's too soft. A power driver. Uh, I'm gonna keep that in mind. My suplex. You know what? Promo. This seems like something you would like. And then blended. Here. This works. Do you like coffee, Miss Bartender? As weird as it may sound from a smoky bartender, uh, no, I don't. Oh, I get it. It's not for everyone. That cat boomer the other day. What about her? Still scared of her? Not really, but she looks so familiar. Maybe you're mixing her up with the other with another cat boomer. No, that's not it. Just like the bandage girl last time. Even with the bandages, there's just something really familiar about her. Maybe you need to stop thinking about it. The answers usually come to you when you stop stressing out. You might be right. Well, I'll leave you for now, my tender. Thanks for everything. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hello, Mr. Detective. And here we are, another new person wandering into the bar. Anything I can get you? Got punch. Okay. He doesn't look too good. Who almost biffed that? Here you go. Oh, you got it right. So, oh, what's up now? A bit of holiday blues, you can say. So you celebrate Mega Christmas? Why wouldn't I? You look more like a festive kind of guy. Why does everyone keep saying that? Well, Festivus is a celebration going against the capitalist of madness that is Mega Christmas. And you know, cheap game. If you have something to say, say it. I'll be frank. Although, now that I think about it, Holiday Blues is not really tied to a specific celebration. It's a season. A season of consumerist craze. Mega Christmas is just a mockery of what real Christmas once was. I mean, the season has slowly become a slave to the corporations of the world. Holiday spirit could only be manipulated so much. But then came the Turbo Mail guy, who started the yearly tradition of dressing up like Santa in the rain. Turbo Mail? That can't be his ring name. It is. Really? Such a techy name was accepted? His partner was Buster Master, and his rival was Dr. Chris Max. Tacky names were not a problem. I mean, I knew there was a wrestler that dressed as Santa every year. I also knew that the guy became insanely popular and the stunt got out of control. But of course, that's the part everyone sings about. Santa became Mega Santa thanks to the Redmond family. Mega Santa sees the error of his ways and becomes the mighty Mega Santa, renaming the holiday Mega Christmas. And then every company jumped on the bandwagon and Christmas was mega Christmas before anyone noticed. You're telling me that the guy who somehow managed to rename the holiday went by their real ring name Turbo Man? Yep. 
That makes the whole holiday sound like a joke. The holiday is a joke. You're telling me you don't celebrate Festivus? No, I don't. You know what kind of people celebrate Festivus? The kind that's so lame and bland that they can only talk about how they're better because they celebrate Festivus. Like the jerks who only eat loop and think they're better than everyone else. I see. Anything else I can get you? Uh, give me a French Weaver, will you? Sure. French Weaver. Oh, my man's just trying to get fucked up. He's the mix. Here. Right, thanks. So, any issues with the city lately? What's the word on the street? Shouldn't I be asking that? There's nothing good, really. The lynching's a white knight stop, so there's that. Really? Something about the armor. I haven't gotten much on that one yet. All in all, the madness following the attacks on the bank seems to have settled down a bit. That's a good to hear. That's good to hear. Uh, have any other details about the attack emerged yet? All records of whatever happened there have been long deleted. Wait, what? Security cams, security system logs, everything was wiped. Whatever happened there has become even more of a mystery now. I wonder if Sai plans on testifying. Does anyone know if Sai went there in the first place? Maybe the lightning of everything actually protects her somehow. Hey bartender, you okay? Sorry, got distracted. There's not much to say, really. There's the odd silly rumor here and there. Like the vending machines, Taser's malfunctioning and applying more strength. Or that the writer of The Last Rain in the World is actually living here as a rain in jar. Those are the kinds of rumors you hear from crackheads. Crackheads might hold that last piece of info you need, but you also hear crap like that. I see. Anyways, I'm leaving. Happy New Year, bartender. Please come again. Okay then, um... But, no wait, she's up. Gil, you there? Yep, taking your break. Let me know if someone comes in. Um, let's save. There we go. Things are pretty quiet outside. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. Jill! <gasps> Kim! Hi, Kim. Just call me Kim. It sounds weird to call Miss. Oh, you seem to be in a good mood. I got some money on Mega Christmas. Wouldn't you be happy? I guess. What can I get you? I'll have a beer. Okay. Let's get him a beer. Nope. Reset that. How you been doing? Pretty good, actually. My hair stopped falling out. My appetite is coming back. I hadn't realized just how much the newspaper was willing on me until I quit. I suddenly stopped feeling defeated. I actually felt like I achieved a victory. Like, like I got hold of my own life. It's so nice to hear. Oh yeah, I'll start bartending training in January, too. Huh? Oh, she's becoming a bartender. Hey! That's great to hear, Kim! Yeah, I did some research and it sounded cool. BTC gives you many benefits, so it sounds like a good thing to do for the time being. I don't know if it's what I want to do for the rest of my life, but it's a good start. It'll give me time to think on the next course of action. A bit of advice, don't go for BTC's housing plans unless you absolutely have to. You have to sign a contract for at least five years of service with a cut in pay and tips. I was gonna go for that one, but I backed down a, a bit at the last minute. How do you back down a bit? Well, I took the chance when the BTC found me an apartment. And instead of signing the BTC contract, I just asked for a regular one. I still have no idea how I got away with that one. I thought those apartments were built by them or something. Back in England, they are. Uh, they have their own real estate companies. Apartments complexes where they have the means to give discounted kind of rooms to employees. But in this city, uh, reality, reality Nua holds an unspoken real estate company. So BTC can't easily offer such promises. Oh. 
Realty knew was a bit weird as far as companies go. Their name has become synonymous with quality, a brand built around certain expectations. But the truth is, the real, uh, Realty Nua has done little to no work in the last two years or so. Really? I mean, when they started, they managed to sell and build upon plots of land that everyone gave up on. They became a big name as far as real estate goes. But in reality, the company itself has actually done less than you think over the years. Most of the time, they're cashing in on their established properties or letting others work with them. I believe in the last 10 years or so, they've only started around 3 or 4 new projects. And they're all expansions of their already established ones. You seem to know a lot about it. Nah, I've just read a lot about it over time, especially after hearing my landlord ramble about them. I think it's all par for the course for real estate companies, really. But it's true that when you hear a name so much, you expect something, I don't know, different. But enough around me on my side, you must be thirsty. Can I get you anything else? Uh, let's try a sugar rush, okay? The easiest joint in the book. There you go. Yay! Actually, Joe, I came here today to thank you. Me? Yeah, back when I first showed up here, I was in a really rough spot. I was shocked, I was tired, I was a total mess. I even said some really mean things, but you had patience with me. Not to mention, you helped me cool down and your boss saved me. And, I don't know, I felt like I had to tell you all that before the year ended. Much appreciated, thanks. But anyways, how are you doing? Last time you were a bit off. I'm better now, thanks a lot. Glad to hear, it was weird to see you like that. It always feels like you were putting up a cool bartender act. I did? Uh, it did? You don't? I don't. Are you sure? What you saw as a cool bartender act is what everyone else has described as being cold. I mean, cold and cool do mean the same, but I don't try to put up that act. Sorry to, dis dis to disillusion you. <laughs> I'm too much of a mess to do such a thing. Huh. Disappointed? Surprise, actually. But let me to believe you were putting on an act. But more importantly, how can I make use of it when I get assigned to a bar? I must investigate further. <laughs> Good luck with that. Say, uh, let's try something bubbly now. Alright. Let's give her a bubbly drink. I'm gonna need some ice. Ah, boss. Boss? Oh, I know you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, nice to see you're fine. I'm more than fine. I'm alive. I'm here. I avoided my biggest mistake in my life thanks to your timely intervention. I, I don't know what overcame me. I just felt like, like everything, was sh everything was shouting. I couldn't stop the shouting, so I just felt like, like, thank you. I didn't even mention it. I just did what I felt was right. Jill, ice please. Right. Are you alright? Do you seek help? You know a couple of people that could help you. Don't worry, I'm perfectly fine. I've gone to a therapist a couple of times, but he says I'm okay. I just... something overcame me, but you intervened and I, I don't know what to say. You already said thank you. Seeing that you're fine is more than enough for me. I should have come to thank you earlier. I owe you that at least. Don't worry. Just go out and be happy. You have a second chance, so use it as best you can. I will. I'll believe it. Happy New Year, Jill, and thank you again. Please come again. So, a couple of weeks ago, I read about some news about a woman saving a suicidal girl, catching her mid-air. Would you know something about that, boss? Uh, uh m maybe. Maybe not. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Whatever it was, probably just did it because it was the right thing to do. Feeling lonely? That voice. Hey, Jill. Long time no see. 
really long time no see. Seriously, it feels like it's been over a year since the last I saw you. I was planning on visiting you last week, but things were pretty heavy back then. So I just waited in the background until your attention wore off a bit. Her for Joe, talking to you here. If I ignore her, she'll be. I'm not an unfathomable sense of dread. You can't just ignore me, you know. Julianne Stingray, I'm talking to you. Calm down, don't fall for a talk. How does she know my full name? Though? I thought your full name was Julianne Natalie Stingray, or did you legally remove the Natalie? What the fuck is she? What is she? I find that she really my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of written in the middle of the screen. What does that mean? Hard not to see them, actually. All right, that's it, I'm going crazy. That's such a self-centered way to see the world. You assume that you're going crazy because you can't accept that this world could be weirder than you think. This world is amazing because of the things you just can't explain. And just because only you experience something doesn't mean it's a liar that you're crazy. I mean, just look at ASMR. No, I'm pretty sure that's what a crazy person would say in this scenario. You acknowledged me. Shit. That's good, I want to. I'm not serving you anything. What? Why? Last time you came, I had to clean the drinks that served off you off the floor. Don't be like that. The drinks were also paid for with my money. I don't know how you did it, but that set any and all plans I had before the rest of the week off balance. I was going to buy some curry with that money I had to put for all those drinks. Dog duty done. I know we have slow days, but for God's sakes. You okay? You look angry. I I'm fine. Uh, good job out there. I'm back. Ah, boss, what happened? Meeting cut short. At least I drank the hat. Hat. Hat seat. The bottles. Are you okay? You look distraught. I'm fine. But he really can't can't see you. I mean, you're right in front of him. And you're wearing jeans under a skirt. Why? Just why? Do I know why people, of course? Is that a new trend? What does she think she's doing? Everyone feels like it's not quite right. Everyone thinks they should call you out. But they can't bring themselves to do it because it's not that wrong. There are things like spats after all. It's uncannily right. Not all that wrong and that and they can't stop staring. I don't think anyone other than me can see it though. They could see if they want to. Jill, you're making an awful lot of faces there. You're okay? It, yeah, just remembering stuff. And I miss not being crazy. Lost some leaving early today. And you stay here. Who stays where? Crap, did I just you have to be the first person I've met who mixes their inner and outer voices. I am, um, I thought I saw one of the dolls near the counter, sorry. Oh, okay. Can I leave a bit earlier today? Sure. Thanks for taking care of the fort. What about me? You haven't left yet. I, I'll thank you when you leave. That's not what I, whatever. Okay, so I got a ghost. AI thing following me. Okay, that's that's a weird one. Our rent is due on the 30th. Make sure your account has the necessary $10,000 or you'll be evicted. Look at the poster. Joe managed to get Gabby off her mind, even if it's just for a little bit. It was an AE today. Biker gang arrested after vandalism during protests. Uh, the members of one of the largest biker gangs in the Motor City sector were arrested after the group's leader, and her entourage were found at the site of a protest last Friday. Their leader, commonly known as the streets, known in the streets as Christine Love, declared to the press that they were unjustly arrested and that her gang was only there to defend protesters from the White Knights. They're afraid of us. They know they can't take us down in the streets, so they use protectors as a shield. And we have no other option but to surrender, Love told AE during a phone conversation. They're currently detained and waiting for trial. The formal charges are unknown so far. Parliament discusses anime films. Also, I'm eating. Hold on, I'm about to mute for a second.
Uh, thank you for waiting. Uh, during an unusual meeting held at Parliament today, delegates discussed the efforts of an anime of anime on their population. It's nothing but filth trash, a representing a representative for the Workers' Party yelled during the meeting. If I could choke every single writer and animator out there, I'd do it. I'd choke them with my own enhanced hands. Several anime studio heads have responded to the news. I think they would ban it if it wasn't bringing so much money to the local market. Uh, Yamake, a producer, told the Ogden Eye uh, during the phone interview. I do agree that anime is trash, but I'll save the genre. You can't trust me. Taylor to Brian retired after name chain request. Oh, wait. Taylor the Brain tired of name change requests. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, we wrote about Taylor, one of the brains in, from the Solo Anima Project. One of the highlights from the interview was unfortunately... That was unfortunately stripped from the finished version was a straight comment about how people asked Taylor to change their name to Brian on a regular basis. I know people try to be funny, but I won't change my name for a punchline, Taylor told AE Team. I like the name Taylor. And there's nothing wrong with Brian. I just won't be a part of the joke. My life is worth more than that. Taylor is currently looking at their chances of becoming a senator in the upcoming electoral season. Oh, interesting. I think this is my last slave song. Yep, it sure is. Alright, let's go to work. I'm gonna mute one more time. I need to eat again. Shit, I also probably need a drink. But, uh, good evening. Hey, Jill, let's have a New Year's party this Saturday. Is that a bit soon? Why, did someone famous get killed at a New Year's party? No, I mean, never mind. Sure, I'm in for it. Great. Hey, Gil. He's coming too. I mean, it's not like he has anything else to do. Hey. No, I mean, where is he? He was escorting a client of his to the station. He should be back any second now. Back. See? So you coming to the New Year's party too, girl? It's not like I have anything else to do, so... I told you. We're depressing people. Oh yeah, the kid from the other day, Gabby, I think you called her, asked me to give you this. I believe it's a note. A note? Gabby, let's see. Hmm. I was wondering if this was gonna come. First of all, I wanna apologize for my behavior before. I was still hurt by my sister's death and it wasn't fair to take it out all on the stress on you, let alone put the blame on you. And so it feels weird to ask this of you after how I treated you, but I really want to talk to you. I want to catch up to chat for a while, to do what you were doing with me before I lashed out. I want to understand this freedom you talked about, the fear that drove you to fight with my sister. I'll go back to the bar on the 31st. I won't take much of your time. If you don't want to see me after all that, uh, after all that, I'll understand. But please, I really want to talk to you, Gabby. Wow, that girl had a, has a big vocabulary. She is always a smart one. The 31st is written in different handwriting. Oh yeah, she asked me when would you be here and relatively free, so I told her about the party. I also assumed you'd say yes to the party, which might not have been the best idea now that I think about it. Boss, I'm having second thoughts about coming to the party. What? Why? Because I really don't want to face Gabby again. Uh, now it's coming back to me. What drove me never to go back and apologize after all these years? Fear and shame. Shame because I know I made a hideously stupid mistake and it's painful to face your mistakes. The fear of what they might say. With Lenore, we never broke up formally, so I was always afraid that if I were to meet her again, she'd break up with me. And I don't want Gabby to tell me that she hates me to my face. Lenore was in the right to break up with me, and Gabby was in the right to hate me. But I don't want her to. 
Maybe if I never see her again, she'll never tell me that. And Jill, you idiot. You idiot. You're thinking backwards. Didn't the letter say she wanted to understand you? If you bail out on this, she will hate you. Not only that, but you're getting a new chance here. Do you want to live the rest of your life running from another memory? Didn't you just say that uh, Armitage, you hate it feeling like that? Armitage? Titty hacker. Alma, right. I don't know what happened when you fought with the girl's sister, but now you have a chance to make amends. And not only that, you have us watching your back. So I want you to think about this. One day of fear or a lifetime filled with regret. Which one do you pick? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I hate it feeling like that. I won't wait, wait. I won't run away this time. Good. Because I would have gone to your apartment and dragged you out of there if need be. Hey, boss. Thanks. That's what friends are for. Yeah. Anyways, let's start the day. Fucking love, boss. Where do I go from here? Time to mix drinks and change lives. Seriously though, it's the second note that has stirred such feelings in me. Second one. Two weeks ago, I got another note in the mail. This one was from Lenore. Is that the envelope you took away from me in a, pi in a panic? Yep. You haven't opened it? Why not open it with Gabby? You're facing one fear, might as well face the other. Maybe. Don't push her, Chief. I'm not, I just, I just know she's capable of doing all that. I'll go secure stuff for the party. Call me if you need anything. Keep it up, Joe. Thanks. Happy holidays! <gasps> Stella! Yay! I'm eating again. Hold on. All right, someone's happy. We held a party for their staff and their children. You should have seen the faces of those kids receiving gifts. Nabbing that Santa suit at the last minute the other day was totally worth it. Santa dresses seem to have been popular this year. I heard they were sold out in most places. There was this weird shortage of Santa suits, but luck was on my side this year. Ahem, sorry for that outburst. Why, you look so happy, I feel happy too. You shouldn't hide your happiness. Um, anyway, can you give me a cobalt velvet, please? Sure. Cobalt velvet. Oh, rocks in the Here you go. Thanks. Are you meeting with Say today? She should be here in a bit. She told me she wanted a drink here, and since I was coming here too, sadly I can't stay for long. I have some errands to run. How's she been lately? She's better. The wounds have healing have been healing really nicely. If only she stopped scratching at her bandages so often. What about her eye? Eye? Oh, hers. Sorry. Ahem. <clears throat> It'll take longer to heal, but as long as it, it's kept clean, there should be no problem. But to be honest, I'm more worried about her emotional wounds. She doesn't show it, but she's had depressive bouts from time to time. And who can blame her? Her life changed completely. The job she loved no longer exists. She was used as a disposable pawn in a whole bank affair. I'm afraid it will, it will all make her go back to her old ways. Old ways? There was a rough spot when Sai was a teen. Her mom's clinic was about to close. Then her biological father, who was an asshole, showed up. And the teachers at her school didn't help. Say is not a slow learner by any means, but her way of learning stuff is different. She needs equivalences to things she knows. 
it needs to get a bit in her mindset. Once you get this, she's the fast learner, but schools don't have that kind of patience. They basically branded her a failure. She even dropped out. I would have suggested a special course somewhere else, but that would have offended her. She's always been against being labeled as special or different. Anyway, say it was totally different during that period. Pfft. Foul mouth, short fused, always frowning, the total opposite of how she is nowadays. From time to time, I see that old look across her face and it scares me. You're comparing her to her teen self though, keep it mature. Maybe she'll sell signs from time to time, but I bet Sai knows better than to go back to that. I hope so. Give me something cold and sweet, will you? Sure. Cold and sweet. No, I have to go by flavor. There we go. Here. Thanks. This is the kind of stuff Sai uh, asked for, you know. Now that you mention it. So I take it Sai's family situation isn't exactly fine and dandy, huh? It's a mess. They've tried to fix over time, but I'm glad to say they've actually done it. Say's mom had a really abusive relationship with Say's biological father. Sadly, like many women in that situation, she just tried to justify his actions. But apparently things got nasty besides mom as Emmy got pregnant. At the point she had an epiphany, I want to say. She didn't want that guy to raise her child, so she finally sought help. Things weren't so easy, though. Before the authorities could take him away, Miss Emmy got a serious beating from him. She still uses a cane to walk thanks to that. She moved here, Sai was born, she started her veterinarian clinic, so he didn't come back. He was drunk and couldn't find any drugs, so he made it to the city. He caused a ruckus for a couple of days until Sai managed to scare him off. How? She beat him to near death three times. Jesus Christ! I love Sai. I'm I'm adopting Sai. Sai's gonna be my daughter now. You can't take her away from me. No, you can't. I, I love her. I love her so much. Hey, yo, A cab is set for Sai. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but oh, don't worry, I laugh too. The dramatic irony there is delicious. Oh, de Mwah. delicious. A bit bellissimo. I'm wondering, can you really be so calm in the lower parts of the city? Hmm? I mean, the streets are not exactly safe, and a cat boomer is sure to become a target. Well, I have my security staff with me at all times, so there's no problem. Besides, this part of the city is comfier. Come again? Sure, uptown is cleaner and maybe more secure, but it's also too sterile. Around here, you can actually feel the warmth of the people. You fear there's people living. I especially like going to a busy food stand. You feel the warmth there that uptown doesn't have. It's also easier to talk to people. You finally came. Welcome. If you try to talk to someone, someone in the upper part of the city, they either shrug you off or flat out ignore you. People around here are a bit wary, but they're also more likely to talk to you. Not that things are nicer here, though. No. Can I give you something? I feel like having a beer. Wait, that too. I just want one. I'm asking for one for me, adding on to your adding one to your order. Oh, that right. Two beers for the girls. Oh, my girls. I love them. the kids after you left. They were all playing with the toys you picked. You nailed it again this year. They were all asking, where's Sai? Where's Sai? Why do they call you just Sai when they call me Auntie Stella? I don't look that way. <laughs> don't worry, they still like you. Sorry I had to leave, but Mom worked overtime that night and I couldn't leave her alone. What happened? Well, there were fireworks and some dogs thought it would be safe to hide in a jar. The little guy managed to get his head and paws inside before getting stuck. And it was plastic, so they couldn't just try to break it. That's messy. She needed someone to hold the dog while she worked. 
poor fellow is scared. Well, I'm out. Oh yeah? We'll be ha oh yeah, we'll be having a New Year's party this Saturday if you want to come. Sure, it's better than depressing myself with my dad's woes about the next fiscal year. I'll be here. Bye, Jill. Bye, Say. Careful. Please come again. You want to come too? I'd love to. I'll also make up for not coming last time. How was the party? Pretty nice. We played true for dare. Had some fun, broke some glasses, ate lots and lots of food. Seriously, looking back, the amount of food was ridiculous compared to the number of people who were there. Better leftovers and left hanging, don't you think? Yeah. Can I get you something? Uh, let's try something classy, okay? Something classy. I just picked that one. I'm stupid. You know what? Let's give her a brand TV. Something classy. Yep, this is the thing. Someone came in quite cheery about something. This Sunday? Oh yeah! Well, you know, her birthday is actually the 25th. Really? There's a weird story from when she was a kid. She heard Mega Santa's story and somehow she got into her head that being by being born on the 25th, she was the spiritual reincarnation of the original Santa and makes her start giving out gifts like crazy. She got over it, but the gifting stuck to her. Spiritual reincarnation. Well, the story says that the Redmond family destroyed Santa's spirit and that Mega Santa was reborn as a manifestation of the Christmas spirit. She thought uh, she was the old Santa spirit in a new body. Heh, <laughs> that girl was delusional as a kid. Huh. Speaking of things you did when you were young, someone mentioned she was worried about you going back to your old days. Something about a rough period when you were angry or something? Oh, that. It's sweet that she's worried. But I won't go back to those days just like that, though. Even if I face the same situation, I'm more mature, you know? I'm not a teen anymore. Expected as much. Told her as much. Hey, can you give me something bubbly? Sure. Something bubbly for a bubbly girl. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. I think she liked this one. Wait, was it this one? Or was it... No, it was... No, dear God, I'm not giving her that. Yeah, I think it was this. Bubbly, bubbly. Hey, chill. This might seem a bit random, but do you remember the first time I came here? Yeah, you're the second white knight I've served. I remember it. Why? Precisely because of that. I've been meaning to ask you about that story. How was your other experience with the white knight? If I had to put it simply, the total opposite of you. Oh? She came here as part of her works, looking for information on some case. I went through the motions, offering her a drink and all that, but she came only for her job. At first I thought she was just another private eye, but she showed me her badge and all. What kind of case was it? Hmm, I wouldn't know. She never told me, but she asked if I saw some people. She got pretty intense when I told her I had no idea who she was talking about. I suggested she asked the vending machine outside, and they told her the suspect climbed on it. She got her info and she left. Pretty professional, if a bit intimidating. She seemed personally invested in the case, though. The way she lost her cool was suspicious. You seem to be pretty good at reading people, Joe. Makes me kind of jealous. Nah, I'm not good at that. It's just a coincidence that I noticed it. But you noticed it. I'm not good at reading people. Even if the cue was thrown in my face, I wouldn't be able to face it. See it. I'm sure you can compensate with another skill. Any particular reason you asked me about that event? Not really. I just found the fact that I was the only other white knight you served weird. Oh, hi, Looney. How you doing? I mean, really? Just two? Weird, I know. I spent most of my life with almost no interactions with white knights until I met you. Means you've had a nice life then. That sounded creepier than I thought. A bit, yeah. Well, I'm done for today. Thanks, Joe. Please come again. I'll go take my break, Joe. Sure. 
I like why I work on assessments. Okay, have fun with assessments. Thank you for the lurk. I appreciate it. I have no more room. It's time to start anew. I'm not going to care if you hear me crunching now. I just got one left. What if I left food for four? Mmm. There we go. Okay, I'm here. Um, Dorothy? You won't get through the bar anytime soon. You can stop walking. Ah, honey. You want something? Uh, the usual, I guess. The usual, usual, usual. Okay, you're freaking me out. What's up with you? Hey, honey, how do you know what's real? How so? I mean, how do you know if what you see is an actual thing? How can you tell if what you see around you is actually happening? What tells you everything is not actually a fabrication? What tells me I'm not just a simulation of the computer? And those ponderings you bought to a bought you to the bar? What? Oh, I'm in the bar. Am I? Dorothy? So you're having a s How the fuck do you say this word? Solis persistic crisis of sorts? Soli what? Solicism, the theory that the self is the only thing that can be known to exist. See, that's another thing right there. That's word, that word. Socialism. What does it even mean? Where the hell did it come from? Well, solis means alone and it's being self. Yes, but how did it come to be? Do you expect me to believe that a lot of people just randomly decided to make noises? They decided, hey, let's make this noise mean this. Doesn't make sense. Word don't, words don't make sense. I've been repeating words for a long time. They've stopped making sense. Why? Calm down. That's just systematic... Systematic citation? Stop making up words, honey. That... And then there's this counter. How can I be sure this counter is really here? It is. Please stop tapping it. Hold on. Just make sure. I should make her a drink at least. I'll have something to throw at her. Um. No, wait. Actually, reset. This should do. I did that wrong. Yes, aged. Stop tapping Connor so much. I'm this close to throwing this at your face. Sorry. <sighs> Let's start from the beginning. Since when did you have this existential crisis? Since earlier today, I think. I was remembering the good times I had with my, my guardian. But I don't know, it was all too sudden. I was thinking about everything that happened from a week ago until now. How much fun I was having, how much I loved everyone around me. And out of nowhere, the thoughts started piling in my head. What is love? What is fun? Are those feelings real? Is this all real? Am I real? 
It tells me I'm actually in a body. What if I'm just some computer somewhere thinking it has a body? What if I'm just a human girl in a comatose dream? What tells me that you're real? Eh? Well, I know it might just be a figment of someone's imagination. Even just an AI simulation of some computer that thinks it's a human. I've been there, Dorothy. That existential doubt and crisis? That uncertainty about whether or not things are real? It was a couple months only, but I remember having panic attacks and scratching my arm to feel something. But the panic attacks gave me a rush of adrenaline, so I couldn't feel the scratch and the fear got worse. What did you do to get over it? Oddly enough, I read a book. The Last Rain in the World, one of my favorites. At one point, I cried with the book and I realized I was crying over fake things, the story and its characters. I didn't care less for them because they were fake. Why not think of reality like that too? Even if I'm a figment of someone's imagination, I still care about you. That's what I told myself, at least. It wasn't immediate, but that focus helped me. Eh, I like that. Hey, can I take this trick? I made it for you. Thanks, okay then. You'll feel something you made, and it burns and itches a lot. I'll get you a towel. Delivery for Dana Zane. Oh, I've been here before. Mr. Mario, welcome back. I have a delivery for Dana Zane. Who's that? Uh, she's my boss. I'll get her. For I'll get her for her. Right. Uh, sign here, please. It's a big package. I wonder what's inside. You should open it if that's something perishable. Maybe it'll need to be refrigerated. Uh, let's see. It's a uh, wiener. A really big wiener. Hey, honey. Mm -hmm. The big package had a big wiener inside. <laughs> what will your boss do with such a thing? I don't know how she'll cook it. Perhaps she'll chop it? Honey. Seems the wiener is too big to eat correctly. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. Maybe you could prepare some right now. What do you say, honey? Do you want some of your boss's wiener? <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> Seriously, Jill? She's the... <laughs> making the jokes. And you're the one trying not to laugh too hard at them. Anyway, we all know if we dare cook this without permission, she'll hang us upside down. She'll hang me upside down. Hey, Jacket Boy, what's your name? I'm Mario. Come on, Mario, I'll buy you a drink. Hmm? You might have another delivery, you know. Uh, this is the last one, actually. I'll accept your offer. I'll have a sunshine cloud. And you? I'm fine. Sunshine cloud, gotcha. You know, I don't swing that way. What way, Lulu? I'm a man's man. I like men, okay? Not that there's anything wrong with liking women, but... Oh, don't worry. I wasn't any women. I was thinking. Thank you, man. Your package let me see Honey here laughing like an idiot. It's easier than you think. That made me happy, and I don't know. It fits what, what she was telling me earlier. More calm than I was when I entered. Glad to help, I guess. Well, do the calls. Bye, Mario. Bye, John. Bye, honey. Enjoy your big wiener. Out with you. He seems like a nice girl. I don't mean for it to sound like I... I get it, I get it. Don't worry. You like guys, it's clear. Speaking of, you like motorcycles, don't you? I do, yeah. Have you been to the Motor District? I spent all my free time in the Motor District, actually. Why? Is it true that they said about all the illegal street races going on there? You're not a cop, are you? As far as I remember, no. Well, I mean, there are illegal races, but there are also semi-legal league going on there. Semi-legal? The authorities acknowledge that there's races going on. They don't know what goes on in them, however. Modified engines, casualties, substance abuse. The illegal ones end up being safer in the end. Hmm. 
Have you heard about a biker called Christian Love? Miss Love, of course. Everyone knows who she is. What about her? Is her gang as dangerous as they say? I don't know. No one knows. Excuse me? They look intimidating enough, but the truth is no one's faced them directly. Moreover, no one wants to be the one that got beat into a pulp if they turn out to be what they seem. So her gang is just there, menacingly, doing their own thing, not bothering anymore. They're just standing there, menacingly! Get out of there, Spongebob! It's been zero days since the Spongebob joke has been made. It's been zero days, cap it up for zero days. Oh, you want anything else? Oh, I have a piano man. All right. But do you believe in Repli Box? Repli Box. There's this belief that some little out there are designed to purposely replicate a particular human. That someone or something replaces those humans with such little. Thus they call them Repli Box. I know a lot about this. I don't. It's in most magazines nowadays. Well, it's the first time I've heard of it. What about it? On my way here, I almost ran over my neighbor. He just showed up in the middle of the street. And I say almost because he moved really quickly out the way. Then I went to deliver a package and somehow my neighbor was there, almost immediately after the whole thing. And he was there the whole time. Maybe it was someone that looked like him. He had the same look, clothes, and mannerisms. Trust me, you know a perfect replica when you see one. If you saw that kid little here, they could easily pass off as human. Or even little idol singers nowadays, whose voices can pass off as human. They could be passing off as humans under our very own notes, replacing us little by little. At this point in time, I really doubt it. Little behavior is a bit different. You can easily tell someone's a little because they seem... How do I put this? They don't care about risk and danger as much as we do. They treat risk with a lot more leniency. Still, be careful. Keep an eye out for uncanny doppelganger. I'm leaving. Thanks for everything. Please him again. What's your take on the rough the bot thing? Do you believe in them? Do you? Not really, but I asked you first. When I was in high school, I had this irrational fear of aliens. Oh gosh, she's just like Luca. I was paranoid that they would come. What would I do then? I remember I lost lots of sleep because of it. That doesn't answer my question. Let me finish. After many months of fear, I reached the conclusion that they might as well apply here. It's useless to be afraid. I am but a simple woman. I wouldn't be able to do shit against them. So I'd rather live without being afraid. Because the memories of not being afraid will be my only solace when the... You would like crabs and bait? Or I mean, when the Replibots come. Jill, are you still afraid of the aliens? What part of it's useless to be afraid didn't you catch? Right. Back, did anything happen? I discovered I have the sense of a humor of an eighth, of an eight-year-old. Anything else new happen? Hey, uh, they bought you a package. Ah, yes, my curated wiener. It's a gift from my folks. It was delayed in customs, but here it is. You guys want some of it? <laughs> That's a new one. Once again, flawless. She wonders if the Mineki Nekos actually bring luck, but I want to prevent her from getting too distracted. Do I have time? I do have time. For you've been chuckling since yesterday. <coughs> Wiener. Uh, shop. There we go. She bought what she wanted and she's pleased with herself. She was surely focused at work. Ah, it's one of these things. Alright, let's see what's going on at Augmented Eye. Oh boy. Yik, the final remaster leads the video game charts. The newest remaster of 2016's Yik, a postmodern RPG, opens the charts with this week's 
with this week with 3.5 million copies shipped on this launch day. Other titles this week include the newly releases such as Hasune Miku Project R Remaster uh, and Sting's Face Remastered for charts include lifetime sales. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Woman Mary's Anime Pillow. Nobody's actually surprised. Oh my god. I remember a time when wacky stuff like this made a lot of headlines, but even though I'm reporting on it, I can't help but think how mundane it's become. I mean, we live in a world where you can just plug into the internet and live there as long as your wallet can afford related fees. Lots of people get married in these virtual spaces. Thanks to new technologies, the traditional views on human relationships have changed so much that someone marrying a literal object feels kind of tame now. If the pillow has some form of intelligence, it might be somewhat different, but it's just a plain, plain generic anime hug pillow. Get with the times, Grandma. The first space colony to develop. First space colony plans to develop its own army. Even though space was imagined as the promised land, a place where humanity will start over, it looks like we're about to report our mistakes from the past, or repeat our mistakes from the past. Uh, the first space colony, Shin Outer Paradise, is currently in talks to develop its own privately owned army, following a leg stretch from the notorious terrorist group. Uh, we're discussing it right now, but the law is most likely approved. We'll have an army, and we'll defend our motherland from any terrorist threats. Alice Rabbit chimed in during a private stream. This terrorist group does not exist. Don't let the Outer Paradise government fool you. The only reason for this law is so they can have more control over the population. I believe everything else is still the same. Oh. They actually kind of like the bar. Oh, let's go to work. Wait, let me save. Now let's go to work. Good evening. Ah, oh, chill. I'm about to get firecrackers. Firecrackers? It's New Year's, right? We need some. Wouldn't firecrackers scare off most of the dude? Yeah, good idea. Go ahead. I'll be back in a bit. Even for a cat lover, you sure get excited about firecrackers a whole lot more than when dogs are involved. I know how hypocritical it sounds, and I don't care. Ah, Jamie's here. Greetings. Anyway, let's start. I just saw that. Ah, here we go. Time to miss drinks and change lives. Ah, oh, that guy that wouldn't come back twice. Yeah, yeah, shut up. My, my man, hey, yo, dat me up. How you doing, brother? By any chance, did something fly over here two weeks ago? On Friday? Yes. There was lots of weird explosion noises throughout the night. Uh, but as far as I understand, those were made by a flying drone or something like that. So it flew by here. I take it you know what uh, what made that noise? Well, let's just keep it at whatever drone story you heard. Right. The noise got annoying after a while, I say. So it remained in the vicinity? I don't know what counts as in the vicinity, but yeah. Distant explosions all night. Interesting. So it didn't get far away. Hmm. Um, now give me a marsh blast. Think you stand a chance? You're like half his size. 
I can fight dirty. He kills people for a living. I can fight dirty. So please, make me sound like a savage. It would be like me saying that you get people drunk for a living. It's not wrong, but there are better ways of saying stuff like that. You're right. Sorry. Like I said, I'm not looking for a fight. I just noticed you had you seem to like strong drinks. What about it? Well, to be honest, it's a rare sighting as well. I didn't even come to believe I'm the only one here who enjoys them, aside from the owner. I suggest you try a suplex next time. Like, do you like it? Hmm. Okay, let's try the suplex then. Right. Suplex. Here. Good stuff. Like a less burning but punchier pal driver. Say, your face looks somewhat somehow familiar, Mr. Call me Jamie. You are? A mangrove. Anyway, I think I saw your face somewhere. Maybe when I needed to look for a specific foul at. Hmm. Did you perhaps go through a nanomachine expunge? I did actually. Figured as much. Only a handful of people do that. And almost all of them are people with nanomachine rejection that feel oddly suicidal. So why go through the whole thing? Rejection? You need to hide something? The second one. It's easy to remain undetected when they have no means to track your activity. I see. How does the expunge work? You lie in a pressure chamber and they give you a special IV solution. It causes nanomachine rejection while giving you the antibodies needed to prevent them from getting back in. For five hours you're trapped in bed while a horrible pressure builds up in your body and the nanomachines are forced out. They're like little needles all over your body. You feel like them in your eyes, your gums, and your toes everywhere. After all that, they need to implant you with a mechanism that constantly releases the same antibodies. Ouch. What do you have, Jamie? Uh, this is a gut punch. Yeah, should have figured. Hey, give me one of those. Sure. Aged and mixed. Here you go. Yeah, I love these. Looks different from yours, though. I had a couple of extra than his, actually. So, where is the antibody unit they stuck with you, Jamie? Inside, like all of the maintenance systems. It can be troublesome at times, but the perks of not having nanomachines in the body outweigh the ones, the cons. And the rest of the enhancements, were they reconstructed, or have you been adding them over time? Over time, either by getting a much needed enhancement, or through fixing injuries. I see. Well, it was a pleasure, Jamie, but I gotta leave. Nice meeting you, Ring Room. Please come again. Don't count on me. You said it twice! Shut up! You seem like a nice guy. Right. I won't call him a bastard, but he's not the nicest in the bunch. Maybe you call him on a bad day. Nah, I think you're just that good at- I think you're just good at bringing the nicest out of people. Oddly enough, the guy tries the hell out of me. Tires the hell out of me. <laughs> Someone's in a good mood. Give me a bad touch, will you? That way you'll be in a good mood too. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, bad touches. This is the this is the worst segue, worst segue of all time. But um, last night while I was trying to go to sleep, I usually watch like YouTube videos, to, you know, like random YouTube videos, and something um, caught my eye to where they were talking about the Duggar case. Now, for people who don't know who the Duggars are. They're the family behind the 19 kids and counting. And um, they're super religious, super conservative. And their son got caught. Um, their son got caught, not, well, well, caught when he was younger, touching his siblings inappropriately, his, his, his sisters. So they took him to a farm to like this, like this, uh, what's it called? Almost like a cultist. Christian camp farm type thing and they were just like oh yeah he's done with that now he's good he's great and then come to find out in 2019 you find out the dude was looking at CP let's call it that 
and it was like, oh, none of that helped. And that literally reminded me of that. And it's bad. It was such a bad segue. But it, it, it stuck in my mind for some reason. It was just like, because especially the way he like explained everything that happened. Like those type of videos where it's like almost documentary like. It's like almost an hour or two. They're, they're very informative. Like the stuff that you find out about some of these, like some of these celebrities and like some of these like, like crazy things that happen in like, fairly recently it's it's crazy to see all of that it's crazy to get all the facts like that too i should not have put all these sunflower seeds in my mouth shit i gotta talk for this Uh oh, reset. All right, give me a second. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get all these seeds out of my mouth. Oh. I hate this bad habit, but I also love it. Okay. <clears throat> Sunflower seeds done. And bad touch serve. <clears throat> Here. Jill, you have such a pretty sense of humor. Guilty as charged. So, what put you in a good mood? Oh yeah, that. Today my sister was supposed to be in court for all the custody proceedings. Of course, not only does she show up later than her husband and drunk at that, but also dress like she got fucked in the back of a parking lot. To top it off, she forgot to even bring her kids. Luckily, my parents brought them to court. The judge assigned the kids to my parents for the time being. So she really messed it up, huh? <clears throat> they came back to the house and Diana started throwing a temper tantrum. She said it was lucky her husband didn't get the kids because the angst would make her jump up the highway. So Eva comes and says, and make sure it kills you because we aren't dealing with you as a cripple. I shouldn't reinforce that behavior, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was the timing, but I've been laughing for an hour now. You want quite the animosity for Diana, don't you? She and I used to be the closest friends when I was seven or eight. We played all the time. We even slept on the same bed for a while. Then she turned into a teen. We stopped playing. She had other things she wanted to do. I could forgive all that. I mean, the age difference and all. But there is something in particular I still can't forgive. It was the day she invited her friends to the house when I went to ask her for something. As I was leaving, one of her friends asked if I was her sister. And she said she had no little sister. Ouch. I think that was the moment that finally broke the pedestal I, had, I held on her. I admired her as much as a kid could admire someone, you know. Little by little, the admiration wore off until I finally reached that breaking point. I felt betrayed. You haven't been able to forgive her after 40 years? Hey! Not that I still hold a crush against her, but rather the Diana who said all those things so many years ago is the same Diana I know today. How so? She hasn't matured one bit. She's still as selfish, childish, and immature as she was back then. When you see her, you don't see an adult. You see an overgrown, horny teen. So aside from destroying any admiration I held for her, she's made sure not to fix that impression. Huh. Enough about me. How are you? 
Everything is fine aside from this note. The note? Remember how I told you I lashed out at my dead girlfriend? I mean, ex sister? Yeah. Now there's no note from her. Let's see. Wow, she must really feel bad about the whole thing. As do I. So what's the problem then? The same fear that drove me away from her in the first place. Right. Give me a brantini, will you? There's a little story I want to tell you. Right. Oh. Okay. I'm actually gonna sit up for this one. I guess it's gonna be a long one. Here, this is the thing. Let's start. Boom. Oh, hell no. This is the story of a girl who grew disillusioned with one of her sisters. Soon it became animosity and not long after that, she distanced herself completely from said sister. With time, the girl would become attached to her eldest sister, looking up to her achievements. All I can look at right now are those boobs. Anna, please. Not now. Said sister would even marry the girl's best friend not soon after. And after the girl went into college, said sister would quit her job. The sister was worried sick about leaving her baby, her baby kid alone, prompting her to quit her high-ranking job. What if I hire your high-ranking lips? Shut up. The girl, even as a doll, felt betrayed. Her role model sister went against everything she held in her high esteem for. She was no longer a child, and yet she felt like a part of her had crumbled. Hey, Joe, I can lift her sweat if you want to see, but she will see. Alright, enough. Enough? Shit. Peace out! Er, I mean, I know the girl is you and the sister is, is the other sister. Please get some point. Right. The point is, if you don't face her, she'll be heavily disappointed. She's trying to make amends with you. That must take courage, lost of it. Yeah, you're right. My mouth's dry, can I get a beer? Right. A beer? Man, am I, I, I'm going crazy, aren't I? Uh, here. Thanks. So tell me. Did you and this Gabby girl get along? Oh yeah. I never had brothers and sisters, but once Lenore introduced me to her as her sister-in-law, she got so excited about having a new sister that she clung to me a lot. I helped her in her studies, we fucked with her, played with her a lot. She was, she was pretty much my sister too. I have to leave, but I'll tell you this. As both a big and little sister, if you don't grant that girl the chance of talking to you, I'll never forgive you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's a small New Year's uh, New Year's party of this Saturday if you're interested. Oh, sure, I'll be here. Remember, I won't forgive you. Yeah, yeah. I'll go take my break. All right. Bah, we're here. You were quite absorbed in the conversation just now. Jamie even said goodbye to you, didn't you hear? A anyway, call me if anything comes up. Less chilly today. Jill, a kid's looking for you. Oh shit. Hey. Oh, Norma. Phew. You're back. Oh fuck you. You n do know I'm not giving you any drinks, right? Crap, I said it out loud. Yeah, um, actually, I wanted to thank you. Phew, she thought it was for her. Thank me? Well, for starters, by not complying and giving me alcohol. Everything else would have fallen apart if I had some. Oh, so responsible, Jill. I kind of faced my mom and told her all about the pressure she was putting on me. I said I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. And? Well, she didn't speak to me for two days. After that, she told me I'd be a waste to spend money in a university just for me not to give it my all. She told me to still go to college course, but I was free to explore. Glad to hear that. But well, I wanted to thank you for that. Me? If I just rushed headfirst into my original plan, things would have gotten ugly. But you were right, I would be hurting her for the sake of hurting. So, thank you. Don't worry about it. 
I'll leave, of course, too late outside. Be careful. Aw, so sweet. Shut up. Hey, Jill, mind helping me here? Sure. Make a Bleeding Jane, please. On it. Thanks. Hey, Joe, do you hate me? Hate is a harsh word. It's not against you directly, but rather the fact that only I can see you. Like I told you, if they wanted, it, they could see you. And why can't I? You're the main character. You're the main character. No, no. What are you? A cute girl. Right. You okay, Joe? Making a lot of faces there. Hmm? Yeah, just remembering stuff. Could you give me a hand here and serve beer, please? Sure. Thanks. Would you lighten up if I showed you I could interact with the environment? Maybe it'll spook me, but let's try. There. Whoa! <clears throat> what the hell? Can't see anything. You sure? Yep. Weird. Nobody expects the door th thing quis <sighs> Fuck. Inquisition. Dorothy. Dorothy quits Inquisition. Dorothy. Oh, fuck it. That's our hard word. Ouch, I bit my tongue. Can't believe I'm using the spare tongue so early in the night. Ahem. Honey! Ah, hey Dorothy. I'm making a quick stop for a drink. Can I get a fuzzy drink? Fluffy drink. Sure. Before you leave, what are you guys doing? What? You guys doing a New Year's party too? Yep. Sure, I'll be here then. Well, I've got things to do, so. You do? Who does what? Sorry, I sneezed. Weird sneezes. Anyways, I'm out for now. Oh, yeah, Joe. Take care of Becky, please. Hey, yo, is that the, is that the is that the dead lady's daughter? What the fuck? Okay, fuck that noise. Fireworks are sold out everywhere. I'll need to get them through more shady means. She's gonna buy them from the internet. She'll find them and put us all at the risk of burning. I'll make sure there's an extra extinguisher at hand. Please. Well, I guess that's it for today. You sure you're fine? I am. Don't worry. Hey, Joe. What if I ask you a silly question? You've seen my clients. You can assume I don't mind silly questions. Silly answers can get on my nerves, though. Sorry, what did you want to ask? Do you know why they call them cat boomers? I mean, I guess their second set of ears look like cats, but... The word boomer seems so out of place. Not so much when you consider it's not, oh, well, it's not them, but their parents who called us, who were called such. Oh, let's go out a bit. Let's go out. Yeah, let's go a bit back first. You do know why cat boomers look like that, right? Uh, because they went through some anti nano machine rejection treatment while they were still a fetus, right? It's called the Yamazaki Ramonia Ramonova treat. Or was it the Romanco Romanico Yamada treatment? The Roma let's call it the catification procedure. It was not only the first successful genetic treatment on a fetus, but also the first way to fight nanomachine rejection. Moreover, the research had a bit of a rocky story. Funding got cut in the middle of it at a critical point that could make or break the whole thing. Not to mention Zaibatsu's court record of not addressing nanomachine rejection at all. The rest of the research was funded by Mackie's Stenkovich. Was it Stenkovich? Let's call him Stenkovich for now. 
He's a businessman whose unborn daughter got diagnosed with early nanomachine rejection. Stengovich funded the research, and in a desperate move, his wife offered herself as and her daughter as test subjects. Of course, the experiment was a success. The girl, Sylvia Stengovich, didn't die. She became the living testament of scientific breakthrough. But then the story of how things played out for Sylvia got sensationalized in the media created a weird fad. Parents made their unborn child go through the catification procedure even if they had no ailments at all. All because one particular girl whose life got saved through the treatment became a media darling for a bit. A whole generation of kids with those cat-like protrusions got born. And their parents got called cat boomers. A generation of parents obsessed with those cat-like features. The fad quickly passed but the term remained in use. Eventually, cat boomers just started being used for people with those protrusions instead of their parents. You keep calling them protrusions. Why is that? Because that's what they are. Eh? You didn't think those things on her head were ears, right? Sure, they can be moved because they're probably connected to the facial and the ear muscle. Thus, they can move like a cat and react to their mood. But in the end, they're just appendages with no real function. Huh. It still surprised me a bit, though, that the biggest mutation they got after their treatment is just that. Those ears are a small miracle on their own. People have been born with no eyes for less intrusive procedures. You really thought they were functional ears, huh? Let's say I learned quite a bit today. Thank you. Don't worry about it. I feel like I should apologize for talking so much instead. And keep in mind, I'm f fucking up the terms. I don't want you saying some someone got protrusions because of a catification procedure. I'll keep it in mind. Wait. What? Yeah, the guy's name was Stankovich. Eh? I just remember Sylvia Stankovich was around my age. When I was a teen, there were some TV specials featuring her. I just remember that I had the biggest crush on her. Now that I think about it, that crush had me very confused back then. And did you need to shout just now? Sorry. In any case, I'm out for today. Alright, careful out there. Oh, flawless. Fuck, I need to make, I need to make $3,000 today. Shit. All right. You've been talking a lot uh, with that Omer girl. Jealous. Can I sell stuff actually? Oh. No, I can't. That sucks. I need $3,000 today. Or I'm getting evicted. BTC closing 40% of its bars in Glitch City. The British Trademark Council. That's what it stands for? Huh. The British Trademark Council is facing some economic troubles in Glitch City. It looks like they're on their way out. Blaming rising inflation rates and a weak currency, the BTC has given the order to disband most, almost half of its recreational businesses in the city. We can't keep doing uh, business like this. Glitch City has a negative impact on our earnings, and we can't continue in the red, a PR representative told the Augmented Eye. Oh yeah, this. Late to the party, Augmented Eye. Uh, Prime Minister Quincy, on the other hand, thinks the BTCs are too greedy. They make a lot of money already, and now they're crying because they can't give, they can't have more? Give me a break. Wearing socks with sandals in public is now a crime. Gods be praised for silly law I'm all in for. <laughs> I like to say we have the freedom to wear whatever we like in the streets of Glitch City, so long as it adheres to decency rules. However, that's about to change. Glitch City Department of Public Decency has declared that wearing socks and sandals together is a punishable crime. If convicted, the guilty face three days of jail as punishment for using that abominable combo. What do I think? Should we wear whatever we want, or should the fashion police of high society decide for you? Whatever the case, I think I'll simply stick to the right side of the battle. Goodbye, socks and sandals. Her freight decreases as the youth prefers Lillum Company. At the beginning of the century, the idea people would rather be with robots instead of other humans was treated as a joke. But the reality is that the convenience of these kinds of relationships have become immensely popular among the Glitch City's youth. To the point to where birth rates are beginning to decrease at an alarming rate. Any May, a 17-year-old student agrees with the general sentiment. It's just so much better than dealing with other people, you know? You can just make your own perfect partner. Oh, and the sex is amazing. 
Don't even get me started. It's expected that new regulations will soon to be announced to address the situation. Bro, I'm tired of fucking dealing with people. This robot seems cooler. All right. Ain't got time. Let's go to work. Good evening. Hey. Okay, so we've got almost everything, but we're still missing a couple of things for Saturday. And so I designate you, Gillian. Applegate as an official guy who goes to the rest to buy the rest of the stuff. Applegate? I have no idea who that is. Why me? I could send Jill, but I wouldn't dare send the lady by herself. And I could go with her, but I believe the bar should have at least two people in the vicinity at all times. You're not gonna say anything, Jill. If I mean if it means not being delivery girl, I'm happy to fake helplessness. Ah, uh, fine, give me that list. I'll be back sometime. Nothing tells me you're planning something, boss. What gives you the impression? Call it a gut feeling. Did you know Gil has a crush? He what? A client of his, a girl that owns a bazaar. She's been coming to him for ages and he's only just started opening up. But he's taking steps backwards and I'm not gonna let him. He's opening up for fuck's sake. And so the errands will take him to the bazaar, I take it. That's right. Huh. Alright then. To the office I go. As for me. Let us time to work. Last one was based on the Titans. Okay, so I gotta just do this over again. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Yo, with a crush, huh? This place, great. Oh, you person. Oh, if it isn't... Oh! Kira Miki! Yes! Hey, Jill. Sorry if, if... But is there anywhere I can hide? There's an unpleasant guy on my trail. Boss, stalked women incoming. Doors open. Go ahead, doors to the left. Thanks. Hello there. Oh, hi there. The other one, that's the back room. Wait, what's the dog doing in the back room? Now where does she? This is my man. Yo, Mr. Donovan, what's happening? Oh, the hell! Perfect. Hey, kid, I'll have the usual. All right. Huh? You remember me after two weeks? Now his usual drinks, huh? Big beer. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two. Here. This seems right. The paper's been a mess lately. You think with all that's happening, they'd stay and do more reports. They're all asking for vacations. I can't afford to be understaffed. So I had to come up with some sort of reward for whoever produces the most reports. I see no difference in my feet, though. Mr. Donovan, I don't mean to sound rude, but... You do know the infamy of the augmented eye with the general public, right? A shitty page that will over-sensationalize everything and report useless things. Of course I know. Then why not try to rectify that image? To put it simply, I'm being clutched by the balls in an unpleasant way. So that Batsu Corp and company have an eye on every publication they haven't bought it yet. Reports on them once and they'll find something to find you with. Twice and you'll find your resources severely cut. Anything beyond that in the best case scenario is that they'll buy the damn apparition to keep it quiet. I know there are more newsworthy things than whatever it is the lackeys pick out the week. But if I overstep my ass is on the line. Huh. Glad to see this hellhole is still in one piece. The BTC has been going ape shit closing bars lately. Oh yeah, that. Yesterday they closed one that served as a key part of a drug trafficking ring. And last week they closed three small bars that served as illegal chicken restaurants. 
Huh. Not to mention, there are like a hundred people who have BTC certifications, certificates, but never use them. Instead, they keep those credentials around to stop police from raiding their homes or warehouses. I don't know about you, but it's obvious to me that some reconstructing will begin at the BTC after this whole thing. Man, shit ran deeper than I thought. And no news out outlet talks about that. Alright, kid, let's try Moonblast now. Come again? Hey, even I have to break the routine from time to time. Moonblast, that's a new one for him. Blended. Here. Now let's see what the ruckus is about. Um, so, what brought you here? Oh, right. Didn't you see a loon come in here? Uh, blue hair, big tits. She's one of the ones from the Encore concert coming up. Not really. Did she jump onto the roof then? Uh, why were you looking for her? Did you want an interview? Uh, not really. Just hitting on her. Hey, I said hitting on her, not hitting her. Stop glaring. Why, though? Are you that bored? Don't you have, like, a family or something? Have you seen that girl? Hot as tits. Also, oh fuck, I, I biffed it. I'm suffering from the weirdest combo of being hard as fuck and curious at the shit right now. I want to know just how detailed those King Class CH1A models are, personally. And so you followed her. I've yet to meet a woman that can not that can resist the charms of Donovan D. Dawson. You're in front of one. And I'm guessing you have quite the selective memory. Like I said, don't you have a family or something? A wife, but that woman cheats on me as much as I cheat on her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In fact, I'm pretty convinced she gets off on the thought of me cheating on her. So that little isn't here, huh? I don't have to find a busty enough replacement tonight or I'll explode. Hey, after you're done glaring, please serve me another uh, pile driver. Right. Let's give him a pile driver. Literally. Seeing as she's not here, I have no reason to stay. Maybe I'll find someone that looks a bit like her. The guy left. Oh, alright. Thanks for sheltering me, Dana. Hope your sister likes the video. No, thank you. Seems you had a hearty talk. Your boss is such a fun person. Her sister is a fan of mine, so I recorded a small video for her and took a couple photos. How nice of you. It's nothing, really. But she did hide me, so it's the least I could do. But, well, we're here already. Might I give me something sweet? Sure. I'll do a sweet. You know what? Sparkle Star. Here. Thanks. So, do you know why Donovan was following you? I don't, but I wasn't in the mood to deal with him. His questions were a bit over the line last time, too. Not the worst I've dealt with, but I just didn't want to humor him. I see. Seems like he was just trying to come on to you. You don't say. Well, not like he'd have a chance anyways. I'm not into older guys, and I'm already committed to a relationship. Figure, what, you are? It's not common knowledge, and the ones that I hear it try to dismiss it as rumors, but... I've been in a relationship with my producer for a while now. Oh! Huh. Really? We're both single, and that kind of stuff is bound to happen when you spend so much time together. But it all started when he read an entry I made in the blog about wanting to experience love and the, and the like. He offered to help with that. After he read it, I thought, sure, why not? I already knew him well enough, I wouldn't hurt to try. How nice. He's a stick in the mud where uh, planning is due, but he's a sweetheart otherwise. I see. You know, I've met two fans of yours lately. Really? Both of them seemed so excited when they were talking about you. It was amazing. <laughs> I don't like the term fan too much. It strikes me as a bit pretentious in my opinion. I have many fans doesn't sit too well. I like many people who like my music better. 
fan of looking uglier and more pretentious Im image for me. Do you like what I do usually? Do you like my music? To be honest, I haven't had much exposure to your work, but the few things I've heard are really good. I'm not gonna lie, having talked to you, I feel like I would support you even if I didn't like you. So nice to hear. Hey, this won't sound familiar, but do you have anything like tea? Uh, let me see. What is tea like? If I can remember correctly, it's something feather, but girl is fine too. Sunshine Cloud. Here. Yeah, this works. Hey, you're a King Class CH1A, right? That I am. May I ask you something about your model? Sure. Are there any differences between you and a DFC-72? Hmm. We both serve the same purpose, but... DFC-72s have a port on their heads, which makes them more versatile. My line lacks that or the resilience of the DT-01Bs. Well, we're a tad more polished elsewhere. Well, specifically, our voice emulators are more advanced and our movements are smoother. A trade-off of functionality and power for appearance, you could say. Ah, oh, I see. Anything new from this concert? Hmm, well, it is an encore. So we're trying to make it the same for those who couldn't go to the first one. We always try to spice it up, like maybe with a surprise song or something. There was this one time I sang a cover of a song by Beamer. Of course, in return, they sang Your Love's a Drug. Ah, so you know the Beamer girls. Really nice kids. You'd be surprised how different from their own, their own station. Personas, uh, they are. Really? Susan, for one, can be really childish at times, but also laughs a lot when loudly at that. Meanwhile, uh, Ina is a party girl, Drew and through. If they're not on tour, she spends her time partying like crazy. Oh, hard to believe. I mean, their image is that of stoic girls with little expressions. Almost like living Victorian dolls or something. Well, they wanted to pop out in the public. They once told me if we want people to notice us, we have to break the cutesy idol concept. So they took to the opposite room by becoming cruel beauties with the melancholic songs. I know I said that word wrong. I wouldn't say they went the opposite way. The opposite of cutesy idols would be unkept tone deaf girls sweeping vitriol and hate. True, I guess. Well, I've gotta go, but let's have a sparkle star first. Alright. I was actually thinking about making that. Well, it's always a pleasure, Jim. Please come again. Will do. Oh, the handsome bartender. Nice to see you. Um, uh... Ball skills back. I'll take my break. Alright. Note to self, buy oil for that door. Also, I saw you, piece of shit. All right, then. Yeah, you're in my spot, please. Oh, sorry. Also, you're cleaning one of the boss's chicken buckets. The boss asked you to do that? If I told you she did, would you believe me? Without a doubt. Let's go with that one. Right. Ready. Ah, Stella, what can I get you? I'm gonna go with a bleeding Jane today. 
Nope, reset. One, two, three. That's gotta be blended. Yo, thank you for watching you here today, playing for size. I came by myself actually. I was in the area, stopped to say hi. Oh, it's pretty interesting though. When I first saw you, I doubt if you ever come here again. Well, this place is comfortable, I must admit. So quiet and secluded. It's also clean, really clean. Gil is the one you can owe to that. Okay. The guy takes pride in how clean he keeps things around him. If you ever need cleaning staff, he's a nice pick. Really? He's a bit out of it today, though. I see. Hey, Jill, have you heard of the new Gold Rush in our city? Gold Rush? Everyone is paying small fortunes to get their hands on pieces of white knight suits. I think I heard a recipe about that, but I'm having doubts, so probably not. In any case, how is it a Gold Rush? Well, the tech behind the suits was always safety guarded, but after the events at the bank... Sorry. At the events of the bank, the suits were remotely shut down, breaking many of them in the process. Many units dropped their armor right there and there, fled when the lynches, uh, lynching is went on. Any white knights still stuck in their suit had to take the armor off manually to run away. That all happened in the middle of the lynchings, so they'd be sitting ducks if they did. Some weren't that lucky, they got beaten up while they weren't able to move. So between the suits becoming glorified paperweights and many white knights going on the run, there ended up being a lot of junk lying around. But the whole scientific community is rejoicing. They're on a race to reverse engineer the suits and take as much technology as possible for them. And of course, even single pieces of the armor fetch a high price these days. Could anyone see a profit from that research to justify those experiments? It's new tech, a whole new field right with patents with uh, patents just open for many. So I'd say yes. Huh. I mean, the BTC is literally a conglomerate built upon patents and trademarks, I can see how. There's one weird case, though. Hmm? There's this guy named Jack. He's the captain of, the, of a very unique Blitzkrieg corpse unit. Unique? The guy had a really small unit, five people including himself. The aesthetics of his unit's armor was heavily modded to the point that they looked like a squad of henshin heroes. And what? Ahem, they looked like really gaudy. Uh, but it turned out the guy actually broke through the software and disabled the remote switch. He has one of the few, if not the only, suits of armor with the OS intact. To say they're among the most wanted people would be an understatement. You know a lot about this. It's interesting, the amount of things you hear when dealing with drunk people of all kinds in the same place. Also helps to put on a front that makes people lower their guards. This should sound familiar to you. True. Wait. There's a freebie. A fun fact. The failsafe was originally going to involve the armor blowing up and leaving no traces. But regulations and laws didn't allow that type of technology near civilians. Yes, even the Bicycle Court has its limits, huh? People love to demo uh, demonize the Bicycle Courts because, let's face it, they're far from innocent. But they're not evil overlords, they're just greedy. They're just a big corporation. They just so happen to have control over what tantamounts to a city state. Well, corporations will naturally resort to draconic draconian methods. I've heard horror stories from people outside the city about trying to use product placement. If you so much as hold a bottle the wrong way or get in the way of a logo, you'll be in for lots of trouble. And let's not start with the parks of the light. Those are dystopias of their own. Then again, most of the demonization is due to Quincy being such a clown. He has no power anyways. He's just the front that whatever council behind up by suit corpse choose. He makes a fool of himself and the attention is taken away from whatever it is the Zaibatsu Corp is actually doing. <sighs> yeah. So what you're saying is the Glitch City is basically a huge theme park. I've called the White Knights glorified in all security in the past, so yeah. Huh. No, seriously, in what? <clears throat> can, can I get a grand TV here, please? Sure, sure. And a company. All aged and mixed. Oh, whew. Almost blended it. Here. Thanks. 
So I take it you're in a good mood today. Does it show? A bit. Yeah, well, I managed to nab a couple of tickets to the Kiramiki concert concert. Nice. All right, as it turns out, she was just here. Again? Ahem, sorry. Again? I can't believe I just missed her. I was surprised too. I was more surprised she remembered my name though. And like, last time she was quite the graceful client. Man, so the rumors about her being really nice in person were actually true? Amazing. I mean, you always want the famous people to be nice in real life. But having such backing to that claim to hear she's so nice to everyone, it's nice to hear, you know. In fact, many think that's what made her so famous so quickly. How she's down to earth and totally accessible, making her someone everyone wants to root for. Ah, I see. Yeah, I mean, I guess you don't want to feel like you're supporting crappy people. Although, to be honest, I've never put much thought into that one. Hell, half the time I have no idea who made what I use, nor do I care much. Being a nice person will take you farther. My daddy always insisted that being ruthless in the boardroom doesn't mean being an ass. And he actually managed to get certain contracts over other more powerful people. All thanks to him being a nice guy overall. Sounds like a good advice. But more importantly, daddy? <clears throat> Do you really believe me saying she was just here that easily? You're not the kind to lie about stuff like that, so sure. Thanks, I guess. That said, can you go to the concert? Can you go to the concert store? What about security in your life? My dad always has a unit keeping an eye on me from a distance. And you'd be surprised at how easily I can disguise myself with just a different hairdo and a cat. I see. I wonder if I could get into the disabled line with saying her wounds. Although she'll probably nag me about she doesn't need it and we shouldn't have used that. Hey, give me a classic choice. Sure. Give me a classic. Let's try a frothy border. Yeah. Here. Thank you. Do you have many servants around the house, though? I do, but they've been with us for so long, they're pretty much family. My dad has always said that if you earn so much trust, they'll gleefully work for you, and everyone wins. We even had a young gardener who left to study engineering. He actually came back. He still comes by every weekend to tend to the plants. Man, that sounds fun. Nice. Let me know if you're ever in need of a job. I might uh, find something for you. Thanks for the offer. Wait, hmm? I just realized something is off with that whole tech gold rush door. What would it be? Wouldn't all that tech be patented anyway? I get trying to crack it in the first place, but that would be true if the tech was patented in the first place. Like, is it? Tebatsu has been so paranoid about making the whole white knife untouchable, they never patent anything. The patent would be in a database that someone could hack and retrieve valuable information from. Not to mention they've been using tech from other companies without any authorization. You know, patent registry in their right mind would approve of the global shutdown system. Let alone how it immobilized everyone still inside one of those suits. For the ones that were upholding the law, they're still using suits that were by all means illegal? The irony runs deep, wouldn't you say? Why do it though? When you have so much money, you start thinking you can screw around with the rules. Well, that power makes you think you're above every law there is. And the city is what happens when those with money start making rules. I'm curious though, have you ever covered up any fuck ups by using money? I think we've all done things we're not proud of at some point of our lives. Well, Joe, I gotta go. Always a pleasure. Please come again. Ah, Alma. No, hello. You're pretty insistent on that much. It's basic courtesy. Something I will fight to uphold. First to greetings, stop. Visiting, please, and thanks, stop. Before you know it, BOOM! Total Anarchy. You're exaggerating. And not. In fact, I'll go through the door again and I'll expect you to probably put you this time. Fine. Hello, Jill. Once upon a midnight dreary while I was pondering, we can weary. Over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly they came tapping. As of one gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitors I met, tapping in my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. 
he overdid it. He totally overdid it. <laughs> Quote the bartender. I did not. So you like poetry? I had a face. Can I get you something? Let's start with a big cobalt Sure. Something I've been wondering about for a while. Hmm? Does the name Shadowmaster69 Chronicles ring any bell? Wow, you look pale. But no, the name doesn't ring any bells. May 22nd, today my daily card reading told me that I'd be a great change thanks to an old man. My bio biology teacher told me I had been picked for an inter-school contest with my latest essay. I just knew a scientific theory on the ideas of auras was as revolutionary as I thought. Soon, I'll bring the world to an occult science similarity. But her entries doesn't seem to have gone that well, though. Mentions of being laughed at being lectured on why the essay was wrong. Joe. I made sure to delete that blog. No evidence should be left. I can think of at least six different sources off the top of my head that have all that stuff that I forgot. Why? Why? Jeez, relax. It's not that bad. What do you mean it's not that bad? Don't you realize how embarrassing it is? It all is? You've all been young, Joe. Relax. It's not like you're still like that nowadays. That would have been embarrassing. You're not still like that, right? Cause no, I gave up on the whole occult thing. It's just that remembering all that stuff is... <sighs> oh, no, I like the way you look. All dressed in black with the rare accessory popping out thanks to the colors. I mean, at least you had the decency to use makeup and take care of yourself. So you have a pick. Oh god, you have a fucking pick. Why do you do this to me? Why do you dig out the sins of my past? <laughs> no, my my past. No. Oh, I was bored. Last Friday, I had to take my mind off of the whole Dayana thing, so I ran a small background check on you. Simple stuff, just checking past internet activity. Please don't run background checks like that. I just use a search engine, you know? I didn't request documents or anything. What led you to the page? You do realize your main mail account everywhere is still the one you used back then, right? Like I said, relax. You were obsessed with the occultism. I wanted to kiss all the boys. And I kind of almost accomplished that in middle school. But still sort of haunts me today. Uh, never mind the rest of the lens of old classmates to go to track you down. Especially if they think you're still the girl they kissed, that kissed them for fun and they're lonely to boot. We all have things we're not too proud of as adults. Uh, now I know how criminals feel when evidence is used against them. I have to ask though, why the 69? It was supposed to be 69, not 69. Like in reference to both the lover and the hermit. I was convinced it meant wise choices. Jill, there's no one, nobody that would read that as 6'9". I, I was 12 at the time. Even at 12, I was, I fucking knew what 69 was. Just how innocent were you back then? You have no idea. Well, let's switch things up a bit. I'll have a sugar rush. Sure. See, if you wanted to make it 6-9, you could have just put 6-9. Like, it was an easy way to do that. Here you go. This is the thing. Say, I'm um, speaking of the past. What was your, what was your last long-term relationship like? That's son. You dug through my past. I've earned the rights to the years. Fine, fine. Long lasting relationships, huh? Romantic ones, I'm guessing. Yep. Well, I've had about four boyfriends who I describe as such that I've introduced to my family at all. The first one was in high school. I broke up with him because he cheated on me. I remember the other girl trying to pick a fight and me just saying, keep the fucker. The second one was during my freshman year. I broke up with him after he thought it'd be funny to punch me in the arm. He starts with a friendly hit, and before you know it... Anyways, 
The other guy I met shortly after I jumped out. He was interested in marriage, but he wanted to get married only after half a year or so of knowing him. And then there's Richard. Who? I spent almost four years with him. We got along pretty well and we had some awesome chemistry. I truly loved him. As time went by, there was a rift that started separating us. He just didn't like my family. He didn't? Moreover, he wasn't a family person. He distanced himself from his own and voiced that he didn't want kids. There was a part of me that wanted to believe, even if I just for a little bit, that maybe he changed his mind. But as much as I love him, that one detail brought a growing gap between us. And at one point, I just had to break up with him. But I'm not here to depress you. Bring me a beer, will you? Sure. Damn, that sucks. You meet the perfect guy, and he's just like, hey, I don't like your family. Thanks for telling me that, by the way. Don't mention it. Okay, one more question. Where are you? Wow, you really are embarrassed at that block, huh? Sure, ask away. At what age did you get those implants in your boobs? Joe, I love you, and I know you're saying that in jest. But I've lived through so many rumors about me getting plastic surgery that I can't and won't take it as a joke. As such, in honoring our friendship, I'll just say this. They're real, and they're spectacular. Now ask the real question before I slap you. I'll grant you one, only one chance to call me by my full name as compensation then. I'll gladly take you off. It's funny that you mentioned slapping because my real question was, why did you get your hands chopped? <laughs> chopped. Oh, she has robot hands. Oh, I never noticed that. Well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is that I spend lots of time typing, and these replacements help me avoid carpal tunnel syndrome. Oh, there's other utilities, like how I can interface with my main devices. For example, there's a tiny computer embedded in my glasses. I move my index finger, it acts like the computer's cursor. There's lots more, but there are small things that sound that don't sound impressive when I say that loud. How did your family take that operation? It took it well enough, except for my mom. She freaked out for months. She even went to the hospital to ask for my hands. Don't you miss them? Sometimes, but just during emotional moments. Like as luck would have it, someone else has them. Shortly before my operation, there was an accident on the highway. One of the victims was this young lady whose right hand got completely crushed. I told them to check if they were compatible now and all that. I mean, implants are not everyone's first choice if they can get a natural replacement. A bit of cosmetic treatment and it could pass as an original hand with no problem. Last I heard, we were compatible and the family agreed to the donation. I don't know what became of her, but I hope she's okay. You didn't tell your mom about that? I didn't want her to want her pestering the poor girl. So, are we cool now? Are we even now? Are we? You were pretty pissed about that in my comment regarding your boobs. Again, I'm sorry. It sounded like a lot less rude in my head. Yeah, don't worry about that. Besides, I get to call you Julianne once. Now you don't. Eh? Why? You just called me by my full name. Are you serious? One chance, only one chance, and you just used it up. Damn it! Surprise! Hey, Alma, this might be a weird tangent, but do you believe in ghosts? Hey! Not particularly, no. Although, there was this paper I read that was quite interesting. It proposed a scenario where nano machine clusters would leave the body after death, and it acted as a collective hide mind through residual brain waves. The result would be basically an image not unlike a hologram. Of course, the hypothesis fell through because such nano machine density is impossible in the body. Even 5% of the amount needed is enough to make the blood too dense for the heart, and it's not like brain waves are potent enough to create those reactions. Still, an interesting read though. I see. Hmm. Don't give me that look. It's not my fault you've convinced yourself that you're crazy. Well, I'll leave them. See you tomorrow. See ya. All done? I am. What about you, Gil? For some reason, the idle girl left him like this, it seems. You think? Might have been not, it might have been a while he was out. True. Hey, boss, you're a fan of wrestling, aren't you? I mean, you were a wrestler, so... That I am? Yeah, why? I was wondering, isn't wrestling fake? Aren't twin tails for little girls and teens with 8th grade syndrome? 8th grade what? When you get down to it, wrestling is as real as a soap opera. I mean, you don't really expect a legal lawsuit to be fixed in a ring, right? 
Sure, in my ideal world, you could solve legal problems through a good old wrestling, but... <clears throat> no, seriously, a free what? But you don't go around calling soap operas fakes. It's a show, it's just so happens to use fight as an expression. You might as well see it as a unique form of theater. Besides, considering the injuries many wrestlers suffer, it's not all fake. Huh, I didn't think about it that way. Sadly, I won't stand for anyone bad-mouthing wrestling. So now I have to go and break yours back to make you humble. Oh, well, wait, what? Come here, fuckboy! Fuckboy, ah! Afraid what? Who the thought we got a bonafide iron on the bar? I think I have enough of rent. I thought I had enough. Oh, I'm 300 off. No. Oh, that sucks. Damn, she about to get kicked out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save. And that's going to be it for today. Hold on. I'm ending stream. I forgot that I had this mic muted. Um, I'm ending stream. Uh, that's it for today. Um, we're gonna go ahead and raid haunted. Um, thank you everyone for coming along and uh, being with me today. This is a great day of Valhalla, great day of beer, great day of story, and we're gonna see what happens tomorrow during the party on New Year's. Um, I should be back on Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But hey, y'all have a good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good whatever, good time zone, people, you know? I spelled that wrong. There we go. All right. So, I'll see everyone next time. Y'all be good to each other. Bye.